What is up, everyone, and welcome to the GCS Unofficial English Broadcast. My name is D2, and with me is the source. Today we have two matches for you on this Saturday or late Friday night if you are in North America. It's going to be Monster Shield versus HKA and Flash Wolves versus Mad. So, uh, the source, what do you have to tell us about these matches? Uh, these matches are... They're a little weird. And just <laughs> well, so like we just saw Flash Wolves beat up Monster Shield, but they also dropped the game in there because they were doing some kind of crazy stuff. We saw some weird things going on with Ignis. They were also trying out missing. Next question is gonna be whether or not missing shows up today up against Matt. And we could see a similar result where Flash Wolves might drop a game because this would be the time to run missing, mm. put him up against a weaker team. So that's a strange matchup. And then we've got Monster Shield versus HKA. HKA got <laughs> beat by J-Team earlier this week. And now they're up against the Monster Shoot who just take a game off Flash Wolves. And I said it yesterday that what we're seeing out of the GCS is that nobody is bad. If you give a team like Monster Shield an opportunity, they can beat a team on the level of Flash Wolves. None of these teams are mechanically deficient. There's just a, a, a various factors of, of drafting capability, a hero pool, and then... Um, opportunity to make X-Factor plays. All of these teams, to a degree, have that ability. And with Monster Shield even being so far at the bottom, they still technically have the skill to stand up to teams in their own league, let alone teams in the rest of the region. So both of these matches could go kind of weird. I actually would favor Monster Shield in this particular matchup. I think they have the more recent win versus HK. HKA has had, what, six series losses in a row? Whereas MS won a few weeks ago, so... MS is running hotter, consider comparably speaking. And HK, honestly, it's not even that they're just barely losing and just you know just a sad story like Monster Shield where they just can't, they just can't get a win. It, it, like every single game is like so close, but they can't get a win. HK is just getting beat, and Monster yeah, Shield yeah. is is hanging in there at the very least. It's so. six straight losses, and then they beat SMG two one, and but right before that had happened, they had just lost to one, and they had also just lost to Mad. In that same in in the previous week, so like it has not been a good time for HKA. So like, like I said, th these games could these games actually have fairly unpredictable outcomes. Um, Flash Wolves, I think, still wins their series, but I think they drop a game if they run missing again. Mm -hmm. Monster Shield, they could easily take this versus HKA. Yeah, I, I would say I, I think they're favored. In any case, let's take a look at their lineup: MG Mori Way. Uh, what was it? MS and Cuckoo? <laughs> Did I get that right? Yes, yes. Like, MS oh. and Cuckoo. Cuckoo, Cuckoo is is back and and he's in and we are we are still definitely seeing some of these changed up rosters. Well, we're getting what you wanted, right? Get some of those B teamers in there, see if they can make something happen. I think Cuckoo is on the main squad. I think uh, I, th I think Cuckoo has been a player attributed to the Monster Shield squad since the beginning of the season. Well, get a, get a sub in there at the very least. You know, get something. Some yeah. Deal. Yeah, in any case, this, this is the time to do it. Well, we're going to see if they can take down HKA. Now, speaking of HKA, let's see if they make some changes as well. The one thing I want to see is to get off Wesker. <laughs> Sorry, Wesker, but he can only play slow, sit-in-the-back-line marksman, and it's not been working so far, especially when Kirknack is such a big part of the meta right now. The other thing I'm curious to see is if people so highly value the Ignis. Now, we saw... We saw teams do reasonably well with Ignis yesterday. As you take a look at HK, it's going to be four Lenter, Easy, Wesker, and Garnett. So Wesker's still in the lineup. Yesterday, we finally saw the Ignis. And it was good. It wasn't great. And in particular, even with a full damage build, Ignises were having trouble blowing people up. Like we would have 
a snare from Aram onto a hero, and they just would not die because the damage wasn't there from Ignis. And that can be a problem when you're when you're short on damage like that. I would say I don't ever feel like the Ignis was ever fed. Well, no. It like, went, when, I, when he was full build. I'm talking about like full build, yeah, super duper late game. Yeah, both teams had 80,000 gold. <laughs> Yeah, but at, at that at that point at that point magic like magic damage just in general is falling off unless you're hitting a squishy head on. Right, true. I don't know. Maybe maybe you're right that the damage the damage was low, but I don't think we ever saw him vastly ahead in like the early and mid game, so I'd like to see it in is there and see does is it actually potent or does it just not matter in Ignis is just again it, a B tier, but he's the B or a, an A tier hero who's the status quo A tier hero. Like Crixie's the status quo C tier hero. Um, I love the, I love these random things you've made up over the past few days. <laughs> no, no, but like we're we're really we are we are very much seeing that kind of development of this mage tree because we just saw Liliana Raz for just so freaking long, and the only thing people would go to was Crixie up until the new update. So. Uh, maybe he maybe he is that kind of status quo character. He brings some utility to the table. Um, he brings some damage. He is never bad, but he's never great. Yeah, that's like that's what we're that's what we need to figure out is Igni is Igni's good across the board, or is he top tier first pick first band worthy like we've like the team seem to think he is. I think he's like slightly better than Crixie. I think what you said was pretty on. As far as Crixie, she's decent in most situations, but she's not the best mage. And Ignis is the same. He's decent in most situations, but just slightly better than the Crixie. And I don't think he's ban worthy. I don't think he's first pick worthy. The only time you'd pick him first is when you just want to... Or not first, but I guess in the first half of the draft is when you'd want to not show off or not give away what you're trying to draft and just pick a solid hero in general and not because yeah. you needed to pick him. He's he is the new he is the new and improved Crixie in terms of ranking tier. Like still Liliana and Raz have the highest playmaking potential. And then the tier down from them, you've got Ignis, who's like, I can basically do what you need. I'm you know, I don't commit you to one strategy. Natalia, who's really there for those blow up Yabaneth strategies, Jinnar, who's there for the death ball, Tuan, who's there for the single target dive combos. And like that's kind of like the tier two of uh, of mages right now, and they like have their individualities, and Ignis is kind of fit in this. Like, I'll do whatever you kind of need. Yeah, and hopefully the Taiwanese teams realize that, or the teams in the GCS, I should say, because it didn't take us very long to be like, he's he's fine, <laughs> he's not that great, guys. Yeah. <laughs> so just I mean, lay he's off the better first than pick. he was before, where he was literally unplayable. Yeah. Although we have, we have there are some people in this game, who are just the biggest Ignis fans, and whenever I, we put Ignis in low on our tier list, people are like, what? Ignis is so good, I play him all the time! And it's like, yeah, in gold, I'm so sorry. <laughs> so, there was actually a Reddit post, and they were talking about, oh, look, Ignis is banned, getting banned in GCS. And then, and then there, there's like this horde of people who didn't know any better, being like, I told you, Ignis is good, that's not a surprise at all! And then the, the OP had to just say, like, this is a new patch, guys. <laughs> yeah, this is this, this this isn't your Ignis. This is a different Ignis that's been revamped, reworked, buffed, given the opportunity to succeed. Right. I just want to see people in the server just try new things, and yeah. like just the Natalia one time. Come on, it's worked in Thailand, and I just feel like they're looking. They just keep looking inward toward the Thai Taiwan server, whether it's on ladder or whether it's just other teams in the region. And they don't want to take any chances because it's just you don't they haven't seen it, right? And it's like, well, you could try something like that. But the problem is I feel like the top teams can't really take chances because they need these wins and the bottom teams don't know any better and they just copy the top teams. Does that make any sense? Oh yeah, for sure. I I would also say that and I don't know this for sure. I've brought this up in, in terms of um just this is an opinion of mine across the board for Arena of Valor. Arena of Valor players seem to not have come from other games. The overwhelming majority of players seem to be new to MOBAs in general. Mm. Even at the professional, even at the high to professional level, I have not seen any indication that any of these players played Challenger level League of Legends, Challenger level Dota. Yeah. Um, well, that's the big distinction, right? It's not they've come from other games, but not at professional levels. So it, not exactly, and so they don't like 
they they still do a lot of things by feel. Hmm. So if they feel like Ignis is good, that's one thing. They haven't sat down with a calculator and crunched the numbers and looked and been like, oh, actually, if I get off this many skills, I can do this many uh, first skills in 10 seconds. It does this much damage if I hit them all. This is the actual DPS. Like they have, they don't very, very often players don't go in and do that math for themselves. Mm. And so they're finding things that feel good because somebody is particularly good at that character or they get bamboozled by it or it look like the trend is building because it is better, but maybe it's only 55% better as opposed to 75% better. It's better. So you see that, 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 uh, that winning trend. All it takes to be a master level player, a grandmaster level player in any game, is to grind long enough and have a fifty one percent win rate. Right, and you theoretically do, you can do it. And and it is kind of a self fulfilling prophecy because if people believe it's good, they're going to have more confidence in their games and play better. Exactly. And then all of a sudden, it's like, oh, this character is good. It's like, well, it's kind of. <laughs> you put more time into it. You master it more. You push it to its limits. You increase. The, the the player skill coefficient in the is something meta question. So I think that's what we've seen for Ignis, unless we're wrong and we just haven't seen anybody really pull out his potential. Same thing with Richter. Like yesterday, well, Richter looked Richter looked 50-50 in certain places, and then Sun brought him into a really powerful late game position and was like, oh, Richter does do something that we weren't expecting. The mystery of Richter is there. There's a reason to ban him. Ignis hasn't shown us that because we haven't seen an overwhelming... Or we did a... see like five games, so. But 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 what I'm saying is, is we haven't seen an overwhelming performance from him. We right. haven't seen him. Well, we that's... haven't seen him be the clutch character that wins you the game. That's even more reason I feel like to not overreact though, because if someone hasn't mastered him, then why are they first picking him? <laughs> Especially if the other team is not going to play them that well anyway. Well, yeah. I suppose these teams don't know that uh, the other team can't play Ignis, and well, good news, we don't have an Ignis ban. So, teams seem to be learning a little bit, and it looks like we're not going to get a fir Ignis first pick either. So, slowly but surely, these teams are learning that what you see in the ladder is not always what you should be doing in the pro matches. I, I would also say that, that it might not necessarily be an overcompensation of people necessarily seeing things on the ladder as much as we don't know how this plays, step one, and two, we just got more bans. We just got a ban we didn't have before, so teams are right. more willing to That's... sacrifice a ban, which to me is okay right now. That said, but the first really board, cannot though. stick. He was yeah. always banned in the first portion, though, so that's a bit of a. But like, you weren't worried because you had two more ban. You had an extra ban now that you could figure out in the middle of the game. Like it was just in terms of the things you could get rid of, and that concerns me down the line because that means you don't understand the complexities of this draft of this new drafting uh, world you live in. And you really need to, like, honestly drill down on whether or not this is worth that ban. You need to do that extra step. Because if you're always going to be feeling you can burn an extra ban on something that you don't understand, you're start going to start to get screwed as teams get better. All right. Well, oh, this guy's contacts are just fire. <laughs> that nice, like, gray-blue. In any case... Wait, was, was he wearing contacts? Well, yeah, his eyes were, like, not a normal human color. <laughs> well, they were I, very... I wasn't looking. I, I was writing down drafts. It was, it was the guy with the white hair. I'm not sure what his name is. But he had, like, okay. grayish, bluish. I guess you could have that color eyes if you were, like, Scandinavian, but yeah. There's... Yeah, that is not an Asian eye color. <laughs> um, anyway. Or at least not a common one. Yeah, it would be very unlikely to see that rest of the trade somehow just go through. In any case, we did have the Ingus... Uh, Picked with the Yebeneth here for the side of HKA to start off, and looks like they're heading towards that Annette. Now, Annette and Yebeneth could have synergy, but they could also have anti synergy because the Hurricane Wall could push them out of Nature's Realm. You would like to push them in if you could, but that involves getting into a very difficult position for the Annette if they do decide to lock. And they, I think they have? Maybe not. In any case, Mammoth is looking pretty good so far. As you see, Mori's just always smiling, man. <laughs> in any case, Lindis, Roxy, Liliana is very, very solid. And this is what happens when you don't feel the need to pick Agnes. Yeah. I mean, other other than... Actually, I'd say both drafts are still pretty solid so far. Even with the increased number of bands, we are still seeing teams be able to find themselves drafts that are cohesive. Um, okay, sideliners, net... sideliners being taken out now. Yeah, this this is where 
I mean, I this mean, has happened a lot, back, actually. Everyone wants to hit the side laners. In, well, the if second you get, part of the draft. If you get one, if you get one side laner in the first half of the draft, you feel you can you can abuse the others, and and you know something your opponent doesn't. I haven't really seen that be truly indicated, but uh, I mean, like Omen is still up. Like if Wesker doesn't ban it, then it's going to be on ms to ban it they banned the grok so now we're looking at an omen pickup for hka and that would be good between omen is that a real ban by the way or are they the grok yeah because we've uh, that, seen grok... that, looks like a, no, that looks like a throwaway we've seen grok do stuff lately but that, lo that looks like a throwaway because they've taken out so many solo laners that now they're looking they're fishing for omen mm. and ms is trying to figure out do you ban omen or superman or something else. Oak. Okay. It'll come uh, up, I think. Look, uh, yeah. Eventually, maybe. Unless they okay, they meant crashed. So Yeah. Tell on us. Ooh. Wesker is just always on these backline mm -hmm. marksmen. I'm telling you, he always does this. Right, right, right. No, you're right, you're right. That's that's uh that's that's Wesker. That's Wesker getting the better of me. We have a Thane hover right now. And a Kali hover as well. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's not a real thing. The Thane's a real thing. MS will totally do that. Cuckoo believes in his Thane. Uh, Even though I think Thane is what, like 0 and 4? Every same every time we've seen him. <laughs> did he win a game yesterday with Thane? I think he did. I don't Yeah, he won a, he he won game one with Thane. Uh, but right. that was when that that was that was when Flash Wolves just like didn't have enough cohesive drafting, and they had the knack, they had the necroth into the uh, crick knack that just destroyed them. Mm. Speaking of necroth, it's going to be the final pick here for HKA. <laughs> um. All right. Okay. So uh. Lanter is going to be annoying. The four and Garnet are going to. <laughs> zone people out, and hopefully there's going to be a lot of damage from Easy and Wesker. See, I l it's a weird draft, but I like this better than what we've seen lately from Ignis, because you need that extra damage. You need double poke, I feel like, if you pick yeah. Ignis. No, no, this 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 draft for them, the my only concern is that it's mildly not tanky enough, and I don't feel as if there's enough uh, solid front line, which means you're putting a lot on Lantern's ability to put in a lot of chaos. Meanwhile, on the other side, Maury's coming for Wesker. He's looking at that Talanus is like, that's free. That's free all day. Thane's going to dive in just to disrupt. You've got reasonable good dive from Liliana. Roxy is going to get in your face. Like Monster Shield, I like their draft a bit more because I feel like it's significantly more straightforward and there are better kill targets. HKA could make something happen, and so we'll see whether or not the, the Ignis and the uh, changed magic crit Talanus. Oh, the, yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah, so like that to me is where this gets interesting is depending on how Wesker positions and plays this, Wesker could be a serious damage threat the entire game. You're not looking at for as much ramp because Telonis is gonna have the magic damage. Magic damage is stronger in the first fifteen minutes of the game. There's opportunity for him to be really, really terrifying, make up for the lack of damage from the Necroth while he gets tanky like there's there's some interesting interactions here when it comes to how characters are going to be to stand up to each other well i really want to see ms build a lot of magic defense because between the telenos the ignis and the Annette, there's a lot of magic damage there and lanter and four it's not like they're going to blow anyone up in my opinion at least not until mid to late game so like yeah I like to see them go for the magic defense early, which is, it's kind of annoying because you have to forego things like Mental Ra, but we'll see what these heroes go for, as Mori's just churning through his jungle at the moment. And interesting, okay, through all of this, I don't think we talked about the fact that because they picked Zephyr, speaking of... Yeah, the Landis. The Landis. Yeah, we, we got, I was about to say, we glossed over that a little bit, but... It's not it's not strictly bad. Depends on how the Lindus builds. And I think Lindus builds too much like old jungle Lindus. I think that they need to start thinking about prioritizing crit a little bit more than they do. I think that I think that being able to crit on Lunar Champion is ungodly terrifying. Um and I know that it, it tends to be this this 
uh, Fen this Fenrir's rank breaker or Fafnir's rank breaker strategy first, but HKA is not that inherently tanky. You're waiting for la like Lanter is starting to build up tanky. The only real tank is going to be that uh, mm -hmm. that you have an F at the top who's starting to be under trouble. Death from above comes in. Lanter is going to come oh, in. Great, great Redwood, Redwood rush. rush and huge damage coming in from Lanter. They are going to trade out one. Can he get a second? Oh, he has to oh, an Lanter, SMG, Lanter. but he's dueling. He's getting the knockups. Needs a little oh. bit more damage. He'll get one. Here comes Easy. He should be able to lock this down. No, no, no. no. Death from above. He gets out of there. Zephyrus is very tinky. <laughs> we oh, haven't seen him in a while. For Wesker, push back, knock up, put oh. slow in there, one. but one is not the greatest early damage dealer. He has built up all of that attack speed instead. Wesker turns around and uh, bops him on the nose, and it looks like even Wesker is with the early attack speed. Looks like it's going to be uh, Fafnir's early for really doubling down on the magic damage, which well, I'm okay with. So long as you go Clavis Sancti second. Isn't Fafnir's I think Fafnir's is physical damage. The no, it's magic it's it's HP I, magic damage. I think you're thinking about um the old Soul Reaver. No. Okay, we need to figure this out. <laughs> Fafnir's? Fafnir's on on hit health percentage magic damage? It's not physical, is it? Anyways, Cuckoo's gonna take some damage, gets slowed, here comes Lantern, double dive into the back line, good death rebuff, but they're all stacked up, they're all stacked up under the Ignis, huge damage from Easy. that's gonna be another kill going down, they're gonna get the nice hurricane wall onto one, he's being slowed by Wesker, more damage comes in, four man wipe for the side of HKA, and they will also get the Abyssal Dragon on top of that. Hmm. As it turns out, it's not a good idea to stand under Holy Embers. <laughs> Maybe not a good idea. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Well, that's how you lose the game. If you are MS. And you see for starting to win this matchup as well, just continuing to be able to heal when he goes into the bushes there. Hold on one second. I'm going to look this up on my actual game because for some reason it's not saying on the site. Dragon's right, Red. Well, Normal attack steal, additional physical damage equal to 8% of target's current HP. I thought it was magic. Yeah, that was it was Soul Reaver. It's the old Soul Reaver thinking of. Uh, well, also right. because most yeah. items do physic do magic, so you're probably you probably just assume they all do magic. Yeah, I just, for some reason my brain thought it did magic, but that's gonna be good. Agnes embrace, but Ag was... Agnes grass doesn't lock him down. Good hurricane wall from Granite to get him out of there. Well, that do was really good wall. because not only did you survive a one v three, speaking of MG, but you forced out hurricane wall, which is a very long cooldown as well. Mori's trying to get in there onto uh, Garnet Lantern is low, but does have the Spirit Sentinel buff there. This skin from Cuckoo, what what is this skin? This, this, it's, this the, it's the new it's the new one. Maybe that's why they're playing thing. <laughs> because new skin. This skin is amazing. Every time he yeah, just every time he valiant charges it, it's just like this huge blue shield. It's I'm I'm digging it, even though the character itself is ma. Okay, so then he's just building that for health percentage damage to deal with the fact that they just have a bunch of really tanky characters oh. so it's fine uh that's gonna be knock up onto mori they get him very very low nature's realm is there they don't they do manage to get this done lantern keeps him there mg is gonna get slowed eats another branching out jump over the wall lantern jumps in jumps out a little bit more damage i mean they can chase him as long as they need to redwood rush forward this is a foregone conclusion and even the way is rotating in easy is there to answer him and just stops him from being able to actually uh, make anything happen. And there is another Abyssal Dragon coming back up. Easy. easy. Going to run right into one. And Cuckoo gets CC. <laughs> gets knocked down. Face check. And they will finish him <laughs> off. Yeah, that's 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 being an Ignis. Uh, it's like, oh, where am I? I am an old mage. Oh, no. <laughs> In any case, he does go down. I do want to see MS be a little bit more careful around the around four on the Yevaneth because you need to bait out the Nature's Realm. You can't be getting into his face because that's exactly what he wants. And you saw that in the last fight. Just pops on Nature's Realm, everyone's dead. He's gonna have to be more careful of that in the future. All right. Well, HK has been trying to rotate Wesker around the map, but they haven't been able to set up any significant seas. There's been too much action. Oh no, he finished a Blitz Blade. I was like, yeah, that's a bit better. That, because... that's. Yeah, that makes way more sense. So it's like the Fafnir's. I don't, I don't like it unless you get some crit. But he, he won't. He's flip building blade like Omni Arms or something now, though. Uh. He, well, he went short sword and dagger. In any case, Mori. Huh. Taking a bit of damage. The Spirit Sentinel will reset. Cuckoo takes a bit of damage from the Holy Embers, but gets out of there as well. 
Now, things have slowed down a little bit. MS is starting to catch up a little bit in that gold. Only down about 800. They certainly can, buck, can come back in this game, but not if members sit in Easy's fire circles. Yes, yeah, they did manage to get that one big setup. And no, 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 now he's building uh, Fafnir's. He's got the second shuriken. Oh. So he's building he's building Fafnir's, and then he'll probably go crit. But that's going to be four, taking a lot of damage. Good nature's realm. He's got some backup from the Drake. <laughs> is going to Wedward Rush. Mori underneath the tower. He's going to do another one. Lancer needs a little bit more damage to be able to finish off Mori, but that's a dangerous project. He will manage to get him with the no ultimate. Mana. Now turning on to one, oh, but no mana two. left. Double kill going over to one. They have recommitted. And the Landis may not bring that much to the table, but uh, she'll kill you if you let her. Yeah, if they're low, you can finish people off. Looks like top lane is getting killed in the meantime, but that's the power of the Yevaneth, just staying alive so long there, 1v3. Even though they MS did a good job spreading out once the Nature's Realm went in there, but just doesn't die under the circumstances. And it's going to pick themselves up the Abyssal Dragon, and they have tied the gold score. Okay, so one, getting that double oh, wait, kill, wait, that's... Wait. Sorry. <laughs> I don't know if it's a skin or what, but that was like... That was just Saturday morning cartoons level of... His, his legs were like... <laughs> I was like, what is going on? That charge was the funniest charge I've ever seen. Anyway, sorry. <laughs> Inter interesting spell effects. Um, anyways, what was I saying? Uh, yeah, the Lindus getting the double kill, that's really, really huge... And okay, so this is the attack speed strategy. I hope this is Clovis. Please be Clovis. Come on. It should be. It's, no, 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 it has to be. There's there's nothing else you could go. Oh, wait, Death from Above is going to be really, really weird. Garnett Ooh. is going to go forward. Wesker takes some damage. That's Agnes. a great Agnes Grass to bring him so deep, but he gets the shield. Dead. He starts to. Oh, it almost looked like he was going to get out of there. Here comes Four now to put some pressure on Amori. He Death from Above's Outlander. He's really, really deep in, but that's going to be a lot of CC, and they do not have the Holy Embers onto the right MG, targets. MG. The Ebeneth is still in there. MG going very, very low. They will bring him down. Wesker still. Still alive, easy. Now getting knocked up. They get the slow onto Mori. A little bit more damage there. Flicker away. Oh no! Goes Cuckoo. Way is gonna go uh, dive very, very deep. Picks up the kill, and Cuckoo does not go down. The members of Edge KA have been absolutely routed. That was such a precarious fight the entire time, and you see the issues with HKA now. Just because they have the zone control from four, and well, Garnett wasn't really there, but. Wesker just had to stay back and attack whatever was in front of her, and unfortunately for Saddle MG, no one was there to help him out when he got overextended there, but that was the only target that both Wesker and Easy felt comfortable going for. Everyone else, they weren't comfortable stepping forward, and that's an issue because they need to be there to provide the damage. I feel like as these fights continue to progress, the Liliana and Lindus are going to be in a better spot to be able to fight because they have a, a bit more protection when they're in those fights. Wesker's about to build a 10-minute rank breaker. Wesker, this is not the build. I, I can I can feel it. I can... I can um, well, you can see the Astral Spear. Said, it's literally there. You know, Astro, but Astro Spear plus Blade, he could still go Muramasa, but I know he's okay, not but going to. Not, even Muramasa doesn't make any sense because you get magic crits. I can just magic crit. The whole point of Wait, the new tell... What, what is he... So I think, did he just grab Astral Spear so he had some penetration and is now building? I, I don't know. Anyways, we'll figure be. that out later. Way takes a little bit of damage He did there. get the gloves, I mean, like you mentioned. Yeah, he did get the gloves. Yeah, he, he grabbed the glove with the sword. So I'm like, what is going, Wesker? <laughs> um, At least he's going some crit. He has 12% now. We're, we're getting there. <laughs> the strategy the strategy is, is, is getting, it's getting creative. But we do see some pressure onto the rocks. They do seem to be slowing him off on the other side of the map. They are going to full commit to killing him. And Lancer considered going in there to try Lancer's and steal so low. the dragon. Boring. He's going to eat the Reiki shot, or at least that's going to keep him running. Now the remaining members from the side of oh, HKA four. are going to go back in. That's a huge amount of healing. That's good damage on the Cuckoo. Wesker finished off the tower in the meantime. Mori's Mori, there. Mori. for his opportunity. He managed wow. to get on top of uh, Garnet. They almost finish him off. Oh. Here come the Holy Embers. They get Cuckoo very low. They have to finish something. They have to get a kill somewhere, but they've lost their front line. One, juking in and out. That's going to be the knockup on Wesker. They finish him off. Everybody is so low. Easy. Easy is just going to get baited in and out of the bush by one. He's going to get finished off by the final auto attack as Lancer was sent back to base. And that is going to be Monster Shield turning the tables. Good, bait, good kind of baiting, good cycling in and out of there from MS, but also poor focus fire there from HKA. They actually played into Thane's new buff. They're trying to focus him down, 
And he was able to heal right back up. If you guys don't know, then his new passive heals over 4 seconds rather than 6, so it's a bit faster. And he gets the damage resistance, so HK was trying to focus him down, saw he was low, but he was tanking through because he is Mr. Tanky Thane there. And HKA played right into the Thane's hands, you know. He could be... The, the, the buffs on him are good if the opponent plays into them, and that's what we saw just now. Pressure on Namori, maybe Lantern dives in, dives out. Wesker now stepping forward, gets poked pretty hard. Still looking to get those big crits, is very much building a cloud of sanctity over on the other side. Looks like a bowl of slaughter coming out for one, so really looking to get his crit stacking as well as add that lifesteal, make himself a very difficult target to duel and finish off because... The burst really isn't there for HK, so if he survives for an extended period of time, he should be able to lifesteal his way to victory. Yeah, funnily enough, he actually has the most farm on the side of MS, so that's a good, t that's a good job by them allowing him to get up there. For trying to hold on to this tower, but it's going down pretty quickly, especially with the Blitzblade. One is a reasonable hero taking down towers. Wow, that Shining Light did a lot of damage before, and he has to Redwood Rush out of there. Koku's going to go ahead and use... His King's Lord just to get a little bit of poke damage here. They can take down this tower. Holy Ember is trying to clear out the way, but this is what I'm talking about. Can't even clear out the Siege Minion there. And Emma is still able to take down the tower. I don't know, man. Igneous is behind. He's not ahead. It doesn't matter. It's not a real sample size. Um, <laughs> it's, it's a Siege <laughs> Minion. Come on. <laughs> uh, um, either way, uh, we'll see how much damage this Lindus does. I don't think I've seen a Lindus clap a Sancti Bow of Slaughter. Ever, I don't think that was ever really like part of the build strategy when she was truly dominating the jungle for right. the last couple months. I like so this like... though because you, f she probably figures that, or he, uh, one is probably figuring that he's not gonna have as much farm, even though he does, and that will help him stay alive in these late game fights. And instead of forcing, you know, the frost gate, he's gonna try to go for the. <laughs> The healing Ooh, dueling way. out Lantern gets into the brush. Just, just does just so him. much damage. Just He's dead, just dead. Lantern, you can't, you can't duel the Lindus, buddy. I'm sorry, especially with that might buff. This and with fun. that much life steal, but that's going to be Garnet going very, very low. Nor managed to Easy, finish him gone. off. Easy drop as well. Monster shield on a tear. They're going to be able to drop two members from the side. Three members, actually. I didn't realize they'd gotten Lantern and all of that. Wait, how did so. they get up nine thousand gold? Ten thousand gold. <laughs> Uh, six kills, three dragons, a bunch of towers. Right, but they were down in gold about, like... Six, six kills, three dragons, a bunch <laughs> of towers? That's going to be the dive onto four. Agnes Grass to pull him back in. He is dead GG? to rights. And, yeah, this should be GG. Bye-bye, Wesker. Pad the stats! Pad the stats! <laughs> she finally got Clavis, but a little bit too late. <laughs> Mori is like, this is my house. <laughs> I love Mori. By the way, do you know who the blue-haired guy is? The guy with the contacts? Uh, based upon where they're MS. sitting, MS, if right? they sit in position, that would be... Uh... I think it's MS. Because MG is the other orange-haired guy. Mori's the orange-haired guy with glasses. Cuckoo's the black-haired guy with glasses. I think... They all got glasses, man. Well, that's why I'm identifying them with their hair as well. No, no, I was just, like, exclaiming, damn, they all got glasses. <laughs> no, MG doesn't. Any case. MG, only player with good sight. <laughs> or contacts. Or contacts. Or MS doesn't either, because he has those blue contacts. Anyway, in any case, I was, the thing was, I was surprised about the 10,000 gold lead, because it felt just through the flow of the game that they'd probably have a five to 6,000, but I don't know. I was just surprised they got up to 10,000, so... I would say just poor rotation. I'm gonna say it happened in, in farm because once uh once one went into the jungle and started being the the player building up additional gold, taking all of those camps. So you you factor in the additional abyssal dragons. They never factor... be. <laughs> no. Um. You factor in the additional abyssal dragons. You factor in how much farm he was getting just around the map. Then you add in six kills, and a lot of them were on him. Uh, he's gonna start to ramp, gets basically to end game, the Zephyr's got basically to end game. Just really good pressure. Yeah, it just... The Yebeneth and the Annette just weren't good enough at peeling for the backline. No, not at all. And even 
even Annette herself, she was just vulnerable the entire time. Ag walk up, Agni's grasp, death from above, literally just Lindis walking up to her and killing her. It's just too much damage for her to sit in the front. They needed some other tankier support if they're gonna if they're gonna have those backline heroes. Like they had the peel there, but they forgot that Annette herself was just going to die. Yeah. By the way, yeah, I, I I didn't mention this earlier, but the commentator on the left, his his IGN is so bad, <laughs> which I thought was funny. Yeah, that's a good IGN. Anyway, so this is an interesting fight because four was extremely low, and they managed to somehow get two here. Yeah, no, they just like they handed the kills to one there, and then this this was super good because one was really patient, really really patient over the course of that fight and then and then this fight as well just set himself up into into really good positioning to avoid taking a lot of damage they bring down four then he baits him again and then baits him again and i mean i uh, we i said it at the start like this you, you would think the la the team in last place wouldn't be able to beat anybody but this is a really well, this I think they're the just card. better than HK at this point. They just had some unfortunate losses. And HK only picked up their three wins at the beginning of the season. I just think that MS is playing a lot better right now. And HK is probably the worst team in the league. Especially because they keep... They haven't won even games for the most part. And they keep putting Wesker yeah. on on these backline marksmen. And it just felt very strange. It felt like they needed to go crit much earlier so she could start shredding people. And not until very late did she finally get the Clavis. And I feel like I mean, that's the strat. Just uh, so here's what you here's what here's what HKA does. They they drop Wesker, pick up Chaser. <laughs> yeah, Maybe. I mean, I mean, think think about it. Like, man's man's not getting any game time. Pew came in well, and took that spot. The thing is, the, he went Blitzblade into Fafnir's, and that's double attack speed, and you do get the extra attack damage as well. But I feel like you're much better off just going. Uh, your first item can maybe be Blitzblade, but your second item has to be like Clavis, and then. Your third item would have to be like Slick Sting or Devil's Handshake, and that gives yeah. you the exact speed and the max and a ton more crit, especially because she's gonna stand there and, and fight. And then if you really, if you really feel you need the health percentage damage, then you go into a late fa into well, a late fast. But the health percentage damage doesn't matter because you're critting magic damage. <laughs> it's. I mean, it still it still has it still does have value, but yes, you you don't really need it on her anymore. Well. Looks like we're having similar bans to last time with the Ebeneth included in here. Roxy as well. Roxy seems like she needs to be banned, like all the time. Yeah, Roxy. Roxy might just be too effective at early stage. When's of the, the game? last time she's lost? I, I feel like she's lost like once or twice, and she's been picked or banned every time. Mm -hmm. Let me think about that. I haven't gone in and done all of the all of the real nitty gritty math on the other stuff and I haven't finished building the, the drafter I wanted. So So MS but, again, they just uh, say <laughs> you know what, you can have the Ignis, it's fine. We'll pick up Liliana, she's good too. And well, just... Marge is much better pickup for them to just Right, be to start safe. off. Yeah. So both teams are realizing you don't first pick Ignis, it's fine. So the Marge is a reasonable first pick here for HKA. MS immediately go for Omen Lindis, who are just extremely solid. Yeah. And HKA. I would not pick the Slims. I feel like you're baiting yourself. I feel like a Zephyr is perfectly acceptable here. Or you well, don't pick your jungler. What it also does is... If you go for the Slims, which looks like... Okay, they go for the Valheim. But still, this allows for MS to do the same thing they did last game. Which is to go for Zephyr again and just have the Landis. Yeah, that's true. But... I just I didn't want them picking their jungler there. It's too. Well, but yeah, but that's the reason. That's part of the reason why as well because MS can just counter it with the same exact lineup that they did last time. So. Yeah, but now they got Omen. Like, right. They, they they reasonably matched the Roxy out. Right. That's for, well. That's what I'm saying. Like MS is. I feel like MS is already winning this draft. Huh? Uh, I would agree. A Raz. What? When was the last time we saw a Raz? Because <laughs> we're in some weird Twilight Zone where no one picks Raz anymore, despite him not getting touched in the patch. Well, I like to... Still being a god. If they're committed to the Zephyrus, and they like the Zephyrus pick here. Because he can get onto the Ignis, he can get on to the Valhine. He can theoretically just scare away the Marja, too, and force Ghostwalk mm -hmm. out of her. 
and that allows them to get Raz in later parts of the draft. It doesn't really matter what HKA does, they're going to need a mage anyway, so I think this is perfectly fine for them. Yeah. The cross Definitely band. This is a good answer. I almost feel like they should have just let them cross through <laughs> and baited HKA into taking him. Yeah, but now there is that, like, what's HKA going to take? Slims. Jungle Zannies. Slims, go. <laughs> Double Marksman? They can't. Hey. Double Marksman. Double uh, Jungle Wisp? <laughs> like... <laughs> <laughs> Let me look through the hero hero uh, uh, list and just come up with something. <laughs> like I I actually don't know what they take. There's there's something. I mean, you could take Murad. Murad um, has, just hasn't had much success at all lately. It just no, but you could. Um, there's something. There's there's something. I'm I'm not remembering right now. Liliana banned you out here from HK because of last. Oh, week. you could go Zill. You go Jungle Zill. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're, they're just banning out. They're just banning out all the attend all of the junglers. It's all about the jungler ban out. And now that you've already got a marksman, they're trying to force them either onto double marksman. But honestly, I think you go Zill. That's they're so squishy at that point. I think you. Game. I think you go. No, I think you go Zill in a second tank. I think and, you need a yeah, more you're tanky. squishy, but I would honestly rather have the Xanus than the Zill because <laughs> <laughs> at least he's tanky. Because look at their lineup; it's just squish yeah it's like a like an orange like an orange. okay i think orange. ha actually doesn't like grok i think that's a legitimate band now that we've seen it twice yeah especially because they have so many squishies here oh my no God. don't you dare go slims Look you're at, gonna pay for that just you're five, gonna pay for that just HA. five marksman it's fine just who cares another marksman here got it it's got one more wisp. Last pick. Oh no! <laughs> this is the squishiest lineup that ever. Oh squished. no! Ah. Uh, this is like if you shoot, saw this in solo there. queue, it would be I, like I report, mean, report I mean, this guy, <laughs> report. Tank. I guess you're going Bruiser Valheim with the double <laughs> slow, and you're gonna pray that you don't get jumped on. Yeah, the problem is there's multiple people who can jump on you, and the most damage in this game is coming from one on. Linda, so not only are they going to jump on you, but one's going to be following up with the damage. Just don't see that working. And oh, hey, hey, look, another hero that can jump on them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, why does it, like, minus the Thane? Because, no, you don't know. Just Thane, no. Well, Cuckoo, minus the Thane. This is one of the better spots for Thane, though, because you're just a big meat shield. You just it, go in there. It is, it is, but like that could still be Mina, and that draft looks better. Like Mina's not banned. Yeah. Like you, you, the Chognar was picked after the Thane, so you could have gone Mina, and you still have good tanky team fight potential with a character significantly more meta and with higher playmaking potential than a Thane. And Cuckoo, if all you can play is Thane, bro, like that's a concern. Yeah, but Thane, he he has a bigger booty than Mina. He's he's got that thickness to him. <laughs> Mina's pretty thick. He's got that new passive, man. Twenty five percent resistance when you're when you're low on health. There's a there's a new a new god of the thickness in town. Look at Mori. Look at Mori. <laughs> MG and Mori just. <laughs> oh my goodness. This guy's a cloud. I love him. Uh. Yes, we are Thane shaming, chat. <laughs> yeah, we're Thane shaming. The f the thing was fine last game though. He did get MVP. No, it it was fine, but like, okay, fine. It's also Monster fine. Shield's, Monster <laughs> Shield's not going to the AIC. I don't need to hold them to that high of a standard. It doesn't really Especially... matter if they play the Thane for the rest of the season. They're really just trying to sneak their way out of last place. Right. I'm gonna stop. I'm gonna stop bashing their drafts. Especially because HKA just falls right into the trap and tries to focus him down when he's super hard to kill. Right when he's low true, health. True. It's it's the bait tactics. Very true. I mean, again, they're they're not they're not playing for a top spot. They don't have to worry about this being abused in the international stage. I don't need to hate on the Thane that much. I just am because I'm a jerk. <laughs> Well, let's I take a look at these. I have no chill. I get it. Well, 
let's take a look at these individual matchups. We have Lindis versus Valheim in the bottom here. Omen versus Marja in the top. Now they're trading out somewhat evenly in both lanes there. So let's say either the side can win that in both of those. I mean, yeah, you always have to worry about Omen doing Omen things to you and, and, and getting a really good Death's Embrace and catching you at half health. That's always possible. But to be honest, I feel like these go like, yeah, like MG can always do that, but then like four can answer back. So it really feels like that lane's going to be even. Same with the bottom. Unless somebody comes in to gank, I don't see either one of the, the marksmen straight up killing each other. Maybe the Valheim does some wildness. And and Lindis decides that she feels like dying and overcommits, but I feel like most of our action is going to be off of heavy rotation and sort of this mid lane to objective skirmish. All right, well, three seconds on the Spirit Sentinel, uh, thirteen on to the Abyssal Dragon. As these teams are gearing up for that, Lantern's going to go ahead and take this for free, and it looks like MS is gearing up to just burn down. The Abyssal as quickly as possible. They have four members in the air. It looks like Mori's jumping in on Garnet, so he's going to take a bit of damage there. That sets up well for this, considering their only tank is about two-thirds health at the moment. Cuckoo's going to have to Valiant Charge away in order to get away from these Marksmen, as one is sharking around the area. So at the end, that's a win for HKA, because they're able to take the Spirit Sentinel and not give away the Abyssal. Yeah, and they'll get a little bit closer to the Chaos Protection, which is super important for them. Like, the longer that goes, they really kind of need that, to be honest. And Easy doing a decent job on Ooh, the... Wesker? Uh, yeah, Wesker starting to take a bit of damage. Cuckoo, I mean, it's always possible for the Thane to make a play. It's just, how Wesker, did, why'd you let him? Yeah, but how it's did, also Wesker. How did he get in that position? I'm wondering that, too. Like, like not, try, not trying to hard flame Wesker, but it's also Wesker. And we have seen that despite his how comfortable he is on these marksmen, he does take very aggressive positioning in a lot of scenarios. So I'm not surprised that that situation occurred, but that will end up being the objective advantage over to Monster Shield. They won't really have to give up a whole lot, and they'll come about 300 gold. The thing is... In this team of last place, in this uh, match of last place teams, HKA has the lineup that can get punished much harder if they make a mistake. Whereas MS can make a lot more mistakes. Here. Four in trouble. Out comes a spear. Ghost walk oh, was there. Death or above. Back in on the lantern, but I don't know if that was the ideal play. So HKA just turns around, says, Thank you very much for making yourself available to our damage. And they will take that kill. So. HK, fine first blood. They even out the gold disadvantage that they were running into. They'll steal away a camp or two. And maybe, just maybe, they can make something happen. Because they've got a very clear window. If this game isn't theirs by the mid-game, and they're not super, super far ahead, eventually, the tankiness will come through for the tanks. And they will get the damage. And characters like Lanter will, and Easy will be popped. Right. And in all, like I was mentioning earlier, in all these team fights, if HKA steps up and gets out of position one time... MS just wipes them out, whereas MS can be a little bit out of position. Obviously, the overaggression from Moria side there, but we'll have to keep an eye on that as we go forward. But a 300 gold lead here for HKA, as some of our objectives are coming back up here. Omen's going to be a little bit low, has to go back to his lane there. Cuckoo's just kind of hovering around, being annoying. Same thing with Garnet. And we do, I mean... <clears throat> and we do have the Blitzblade here picked up for... Lindis on the bottom. And likely to be matched out here from the Valhan. So very good farming here from one. Just out farming the Valhan up until this point and really just bullying Wesker out of the lane, which is hard to do. That's a Valhan. Yeah. Now we are seeing a second Abyssal Dragon being started, but the members of HKA are two steps behind the play. They are going to put some pressure onto Wei, but it doesn't really matter. That's the stun of the Cuckoo. They may actually be able to kill him. Cast Protection there to give them the space to maneuver, but there's going to be the stun. Death from above comes through. A heal Mori. was used to keep him alive, but that's a really good stun onto Mori. Cuckoo goes back in. He's going to get instantly blown up. Wei was poking from the side, but didn't feel confident to commit. So HKA will walk away with another kill, but objective over to Monster Shield, and the gold stays even. Yeah, Cuckoo having to give his life there for Moray. It was not the best rotation in and out there. They were kind of staying out of the fight. Maybe one could have been a little bit more aggressive, but it uh, didn't work out for them. Destin Brace coming in on four. There was a nice spear on the MG, though. Can you take him out before he dies? No. HK is able to take him out. Yeah, and HK being handed kill after kill with just better macro opportunities coming through for the side of Monster Shield. 
uh, I have to wonder a little bit on why uh, HA or why Monster Shield are giving HA these opportunities, but they're going to steal away a Mike Golem, hand that over to one, and I mean the more the more value you put on this Lindus, the better towards the early to mid game. I still already has the most gold on the team. Yeah. I, I still am surprised that Wei hasn't made a bigger play on the Raz, though. He's playing it pretty timidly. Well, this is what we've been seeing, right? The Ignis is able to dominate the early game. All right, Force getting going to get Death Embrace. Does he have the Ghost Pocket? He does. Not going to be able to get out of there just yet, though. And down she goes. But yeah, like we mentioned, Ignis has a decent early game where he has that poke and he has that sustain. So in that lane matchup, he's going to win. And I think Wei is just biding his time, realizing he doesn't really have this early game. But come the mid to late game, he will have those fireballs on full power. Hmm. So, oh, oh there's wait, some pressure wait. on the way. Way needs to get out of there. Doesn't Who? manage to. How did he get there? I think they just I think they just caught him rotating. Yeah, he was trying to he was trying to rotate in poke, maybe scout, and he ends up going down. He's gonna leave, relieve the pressure in the mid, put some more pressure onto top. But could definitely see one and cuckoo get aggressive, and actually they're gonna just go pick up another objective. So three abyssal dragons in a row. No ability for HKA to contest. They're gonna start to put a little bit of pressure in the mid, but. This dragon's going to drop, and they could easily get caught out by Cuckoo, but Cuckoo's just there to anchor the bush and to let him know that he is there. Easy, <laughs> very easy steps for a decent His death, value but... charges are just weird. That one, he just floated across the map. So now yeah, his it legs looks like really a, that, that has to be something with this skin. Like, the way they animated the skin is a little... Well, sometimes he floats like he just saw there, and sometimes his legs move like double the speed of what you're supposed to do when you're running. <laughs> I can't help but notice that every time. Way good dodge from Gardet. He's gonna try to hold on here into the middle. More members coming around, but there's three still here. Looks like HK is not gonna go ahead and commit. Look, oh, but we have uh, Omori jumping on to four here. Forces out the the uh, ghost walk and MG flickers forward. Tries to get Lander. MG being very aggressive in this game does have the members behind him though, but he's gonna have to back off as there's members here for HKA as well. And a thousand three hundred gold lead picked up here for MS. Oh, the monster! Oh, Wester so went way too far. That said, MS is extremely low as well. Cuckoo having to get out of there uses the shield as well. Garnet getting extremely low. The spear lands on one. He's able to get out of there before he falls. Way is now the new target. He gets immediately dropped. Mori finds a return kill, but he's going to die for his aggression. And that's a two for one on the side of HKA. Looks like the coordination just kind of isn't there for both teams. As MS is continually jumping in to try to save teammates as they're already out of the fight. So it's kind of like just single file walking in one by one. Not necessarily dying, but you kind of want to have that synergy and everyone going in at once. Yeah, okay, one. Do you really think you can kill Wesker? He thinks he can kill Wesker. Steps forward, gets a little <laughs> bit of damage, but he needed one more lunar. Like, he was just like, I got this, guys. I, okay, maybe I don't got this. <laughs> well, he forces him back, which is... Which is something. He was going to back after he cleared the wave anyway. Yeah, almost got him. I Good effort. A for effort. An A, an, an a for effort, a, a B for execution. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> Either way, we've seen Cuckoo. a little bit more pressure put in the top. Four being chased down by MG. That we are. Oh no, he is oh, going nice to death rebuff from Mori, but they they will finish the job. So that's going to be the kill. And now they're going to look to rotate very quickly because the members of HK are here, but they are not pressuring this dragon. Actually, it looks like it's going to be a split play because they don't actually need to back up. There are four members down there. They know where everybody is. They are going to get a second in oh, tower. Backing. And the moment that HKA commits to this back, if they show enough members, it's going to be another abyssal dragon going down, and it's also going to be the mid tower dropping before that even occurs. Yeah, it looks like members weren't really close enough to the Abyssal, so they're just going to take this mid-tower, and that's very important, as we mentioned in the past. Big Holy Embers comes on the MG, going to get their shield here from Cuckoo, so he can get out of there nice and safe. However, that is, I believe that's true damage, so even the shield wouldn't have saved him in that circumstance, so the damage was enough. And so, tower actually goes down in the top lane. That was actually well done there but by, I believe it was Lanter, just realizing, okay, we're being stupid. We're all committing to backing here. Stuck around, making sure to take the tower and trade out evenly. Hmm. Uh, uh, I thought I saw something weird in the build. Damage onto Cuckoo. Way has Boomstick but... and Hecate. That's going to be a lot of damage coming in. 
and he has Pierce built into his kit. So he's he's hunting for he's hunting for easy. Cuckoo, four members there. Cuckoo just runs out of there literally, <laughs> gets the shield from himself. Uh, I think his passive actually popped as well, so that's gonna be difficult for him to stay in fights here. Mori actually jumps in, gets holy fire, and barely. Nope, he actually gets killed at the end there. MG into the back line. Holy Ember's trying to take him down. He will go down in the end, but not before getting a lot of damage. And so too does Way go down. Kuku's trying to make something happen. One, can he find the kill here? Trying to get the damage on. Can he finish off before before he dies? That's so much damage. Oh my goodness, Wesker's trying to follow him as well. There's the entrapment. Wesker, can you kill him? No. One. One no, is a beast. Gotta... One kills Wesker. He's gonna get four. He's gonna get four too. He's gonna get him. Yeah, four, I, I bet you anything he gets four. him. Four? He has the ghost walk. Will the ghost walk be enough? It is going to be enough as he takes him down with the dark pulse there. Just wait a little Should've bit too long. Should have rushed him. Yeah. Should have rushed him. He took too much time. Uh, gold advantage still in favor of HKA. A lot of that coming off of those abyssal dragons and the towers that are. Or gold advantage towards monster shield off the abyssal dragons and the towers that are dropped. HKA did rally back fairly well. And now they've built out a lot of slow control. You've got the frost cape. You also have uh, two um, Frosty's Revenge. It's Shay in a little bit of trouble. Mori, Mori looking for four. He steps oh, forward. That's four! a huge amount of damage. In comes a massive death from above. That's pressure onto Lantern. They need to find one more target. In comes the Holy Embers. That's going to finish off one. Can they get onto Lantern? They will get him. And MG. MG, finish the dragon. Just finish the dragon, MG. Well, he's afraid of Garnet jumping in there with the energy search. Able to finish out in the end. Good timing on that. Garnet. Is low. MS picks up that time that's buff here. Cuckoo's gonna go here under the tower because he has one. one behind him. One is going to take everyone out there, and that big booty from Cuckoo allows one to go ahead and get in there and take them down. I mean, that's a thing right there that never misses leg day, <laughs> or or his uh, glute day. <laughs> Just yeah, it does 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 them butt. squats. <laughs> does does them squats. Oh my goodness. Just, uh, yeah, it can be out of the tower. No big deal there. But that was just Mori realizing an opportunity as the four got extremely low. He's like, if I death from above, and he doesn't have the fastest twitch in the world or just pre ghost walks, this is a kill. And before the ghost walk could even go off, Mori snipes him out with that death from above. MG oh, takes. that damage. Getting some damage from the Holy Embers. On two MG. Still has about two thirds health though. Gonna go oh, back. Lantern's dead. Lantern's dead. He's gonna be jumped on. Whoa. Huge damage from through here. Act no, Garnet. he does go down. There's gonna be extra damage in there by way. Mori hasn't even landed on a target. They'll bait out the holy embers. One should be fine to be able to farm up. Maybe we'll just go for the major objective and back up and go for Dark Slayer. I know he's just gonna clear waves. Just just killing minions. To answer the question in chat, this is post patch. So that's why you're seeing Thane. That's why you're seeing Ignis. Although the Thane were still Thane Chambers. <laughs> I'm not like... sold. On, I'm not sold on Thane. I think the Thane is irrelevant to the the superior composition and drafting coming out from uh, MS to the point where you, that could be Mina. That could be a couple of other uh, tanky supports. Well, his butt it's has certainly bad, been but big. It's not, <laughs> not the answer. His glutus my... maximus has certainly been mucho grande this game. Yeah, no, it's been it's it's also been well played. I I still think that I still need to see a little bit more of the Thane to the point where he's threatening the back line or disrupting on such a level that one is oh. able to do crazy stuff. I just but, noticed that more is going full damage. Huh. Uh yeah. Huh. I mean, he's ahead. He's tanky because he's. Zephyrus, and now he has Blade of Eternity. And so does Lindus, by the way. Lindus already has a full build. Yep. 14 minute full build. 5, 1, and 4, 12k gold. It makes it Nothing a bit easier when you have Blitz Blade and Clavis Song Day, which are very cheap nowadays. Though the yep. Blow of Slaughter is 2400, and uh, the Blade of Eternity is not that cheap either, so I'll kind of take it back there. Anyways. I mean, I'm, I'm, I, I accept this build for Lindus. It's got plenty of crit, plenty of damage and one um, has played it excellently yeah. yeah one one's one's had very very top tier positioning <laughs> some of the ultimate out from cuckoo cuckoo tried to pop the uh, the uh, king's glory but didn't even do damage to these squishies that said the tower is going to go down more taking a lot of damage here he does have that blade of eternity even if he goes down garnet trying to get in there but taking a lot of damage himself as 
The tower up top is going down as well. Cuckoo, very, very low. His passive not going to save him this time. But in the meantime, they're taking down the tower. Ghost walk used. Four is in a bit of trouble if he sticks around here after that ghost walk. Are they going to turn on him? No, one's going to just rotate over to this bot side. This clinical here, MS just continuing to rotate. Can they get this tower here? One, not going to be too aggressive, as he knows that the bounty on his head is pretty high at this point. And that could be the start of a comeback, potentially, if he goes down. So they're going to play it safe. No objectives up at the moment. But M is still with a very massive lead. Yeah. It's this. This looks like a 2 0 for MS in the making. All they need to do is find the right kind of team fight. And pretty really, much seeing that HK doesn't really have the damage to get the job done. The really tank Marja with the Aegis and Barrett's. It's just mm. she just doesn't have enough damage. Yeah, you need, to, you need to be able to pressure one, you need to be able to kill one in way. And. She's not good enough a tank to be to build her tanky. There's just no reason for it because she doesn't have good enough CC, so she's not really doing anything. She's there anyway. Cuckoo goes within the with the <laughs> slam and the charge doesn't get it though. Goes for the <laughs> King's Glory just to tell him to back off. Like I have a big sword and I can swing it at you. It's more of a lance in this scenario. Uh, whatever. <laughs> in any case. Pressure's coming in here from MS. Danger sharp implement. Yeah, that's that's the one. That's what it's going for. Four with all the tankiness doesn't have any magic defense, so taking a lot of damage here from way. The power surges continue to come out. Garnet's extremely low as well. Uh, as I say, that four looks like they bought the medallion of Troy. As you can see, that purple shield there. But MS is continuing to put on the pressure. And having pushed in all these waves, they can turn around and pick up the Abyssal Dragon, which has just spawned here. HK kind of realizing it, but it's going to be too little and way too late. This Garnet can't even get an energy search in there. And this seems like the beginning of the end. 11,000 gold lead. Cuckoo just walking in because he doesn't even care. Just taking all the damage here. One's like, ah, we could take you 2v5. No big deal. Way's going to be aggressing in onto this mid lane. Forcing a lot of damage. Gets the death embrace in there. MG is getting a lot of aggro back from sort of HKA. But he's surviving through it. At least till now he finally goes down here. Way's going to be turning onto West here. And he goes down to Mori as he's going to be living through with that death rift. Will he come back? Yeah, he gets out of there. Still staying alive. Ghostwall comes out here from four, but they're onto the core here. Is it going to go down? It is. And that is a 2-0 for Monster Shield. And a pretty fast 2-0. Okay. okay, guys. Okay. <laughs> That went from hand. That went from high fives to double high fives to to, to shadow to like to to shadow boxing the focus gloves to just beating Mori like that. That escalated quickly. Okay, it is only their second series win of the season, so you can see why they're happy. They've been losing for a while. Even so, like Cuckoo, Cuckoo's too happy. That was Cuckoo, right on the side next to Mori. No, that's NG. Oh, that was MG. Oh, I was like, I was like, Cuckoo, Cuckoo's really li li living it up right now. Like he's getting on stage, he's winning games. Like Cuckoo, Cuckoo proving he is not the problem. As we like to say in the heroes of the storm scene. <laughs> Do you know that meme? Uh, I don't think so. I think I've heard of it before. Uh, oh, there, there was a, there was a long-standing joke between a couple of teams and a couple of players that this one player on the team. Um, I think I, think I did here, to, actually. Yeah, Yeah. so so it was two of the players from Heroes Hearth got kicked off of Gale Force Esports last year. Mm -hmm. And then Gale For and then Heroes Hearth comes in, dom has been dominating in the league. It was Crowan and McIntyre, and it's you know and it's like Crowan wasn't the problem. Like he's he's he successfully proved he was not the reason they were losing. So right now Cuckoo being like, I'm not the problem, guys. <laughs> well, he just got subbed in yesterday, so it certainly worked out for oh, them there. He's he's what? getting wins. He's racking up victory. Way, by the way, has actually been pretty good on the mid laners as well. Like we saw him play the Ignis better than his counterpart yesterday. Yeah, and, and they just gave it up after a while. They're like, okay, we don't need Ignis. <laughs> but way, yeah, way, way played it better than missing. Yeah, and one was doing a very good job as well. So as long as we're able to, oh, one is the guy with the uh, the contacts. Anyway, one. Staring at you with those blue eyes. I guess he just wants yeah. to be Lindus. <laughs> He's staring straight into your soul, right yes. in your. He wanted the he same. Looks you, he looks you directly in your optic stems. He wanted to have the same color eyes as Lindus, I guess. 
I mean, you know what? One play, one one played incredibly good. Lindis. We got to see Landis twice. We got to see the and he won both and, times against the other marksman who is. Oh yeah, no, he 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 dominated the he dominated those lanes, or at least went very much even in those lanes, and then was able to transition that into good team fighting and skirmishing around the objectives. The other impressive thing we're seeing is. This is the adaptation of side laners picking up marksmen again due to the fact that marksmen are no longer being considered the only thing you can play in the jungle. And he just proved you like we can now pick Lindus and threat and threaten it on more than one front. And uh, you know, granted, this is up against HK, maybe that doesn't work up against a better team, but that's that is some flexibility, and I'd love to see Monster Shield continue to perform as the season goes on despite their their unfortunate positioning in the league. I'm just disappointed in Wesker. He's supposed to be the marksman main, and he just got completely shut down by one here. And I imagine one has other heroes too, or other positions. Whereas Wesker, his only he doesn't play marksman jungler. By the way, Wesker, he only plays yeah. sideline marksman. So that's not a good, that's not a good sign for their team. Yeah, no, it is. It is it is a collective issue for them. Especially going forward, and granted, <laughs> look at the coach. Team. Look at the coach in the middle. <laughs> Is that his kid? I'm guessing. I don't know, but he's so happy. <laughs> his kid or his or his nephew. I love something. the MS coach. Oh my goodness, he's such a happy guy. The MS coach is a good guy. Um, and, and when MS won against one earlier this season for the first series victory, he was le legit just bawling, like crying. <laughs> look at, oh my god, I love the MS coach. He's so fantastic. <laughs> Um, oh, so funny. Yeah, no. M MS still has to, MS's next two series ever against SMG and J Team. Series we don't really <laughs> see them winning. But what is <laughs> what is he doing? <laughs> oh my! You God. know what? He's he's adding production value. <laughs> they should just give that kid a buff as well. <laughs> Maybe some airwaves. <laughs> yeah. Oh like goodness. where's where's that buff onesie? <laughs> All right, we have an interview with Mori here. We're gonna let this interview run, and when we come back, we'll have Flash Wolves versus Mad in a bit. See you guys. This <laughs> 因為死人沒有關係啊可是如果你一直打野的話會有輔助替你去死看哭哭剛剛幫你擋了那麼多那個是他該做的哦哇這是什麼心態啊打野可以這樣子嗎好那我想問說在第一場對戰的時候呢在
想请问，就是 MS 今天第二场其实有出了《林地边线》，那在打野刀跟版本改动之后，你觉得在边线上面，不要说职业联赛上哈，我们谈一般排位赛，射手边线、林地边线是可以的吗？呃，可能要三排吧。嗯，单排的话，我是不建议，因为可能会被骂。玩家们有听到了吗？呃，职业赛五排队伍是有练过的哦。如果是单排的话，林地边线不太建议。好，那其实今天对战完呢，距离例行赛完赛还有两场 ，MS 还有两场要打、哦。那分别是对 SMG 跟 J Team， 你们觉得能摆脱升降赛的命运吗？应该可以吧。哦，给自己有一点点信心，好不好？再给你一次机会，给自己有信心，要相信自己，相信你的队友，相信教练。可以。可以 ，OK， 好的，这这个是有点，有点吓到我了，突突然大声什么？是的，但也是希望 MS 在后续两场可以好好的加油，真的要摆脱升降赛的命运，因为之前的 A 老师有说，进了升降赛，剃光头，你要跟着他剃吗？如果他剃。当然不要！哎，很聪明哦，差一点点就掉到了，那、啊、真可惜。不过呢，也是谢谢 m o r i 接受我们的赛后访问。这两场表现真的是非常精彩哦。那紧接着广告过后回来呢，继续是我们今天的第二场对战，是由闪电狼要来对上 My Team。广告过后，待会回来。这是我的主人阿伟。新手机耶！打从按下开关的那一天起，我就和他开始了同居生活。他每天把我捧在手掌心，总是摆着他的招牌一号表情。他的朋友都说，只要看到一号表情，一百公尺外就知道他是阿伟。直到两年前的某一天。阿伟开始变得有点不一样。阿伟，赶快下载这个啦，这真的很好玩哎！你现在下载，我现在教你，快点。这个吗？对对对。好，我们先进入进入游戏。进入。我教你，这边是移动，移动，然后这边。他现在开始用双手帮我按摩，不管是上班搭车，还是中午吃午餐，还是假日练完球，从以前一个人都不说话，到现在一堆人，话还一大堆。我不太清楚阿伟到底在忙什么，不过我知道他忙得越来越起劲，忙到忘记吃饭，忙到不接电话，有时候甚至忙到彻夜不眠。阿伟自己可能没有感觉到，他的身边多了许多新朋友，嗯，包括不太单纯的朋友。以前的阿伟只有一号表情。现在的阿伟有二号、三号、四号表情，习惯有你到顶蓝牙。哎呦，现在打都不用揪了嘛！好啦，别吵了。传说对决二周年。In Buff, we trust. Buff 能量饮料含花青素双效登场。因为我本来就是做手机相关的行业，然后就还是会碰到手游游戏，然后玩下去就一发不可收拾。嗯，其实玩传说的契机就是看周遭的朋友一起一起享受这份欢乐的时候，那是快乐的。所以，可是至今。如今只剩下我在玩，因为他们没有我强。因为我本身就喜欢这种 MOBA 类型的游戏，那我在这游戏的经验也比较丰富，那也热爱比赛，然后刚好 HK 有这份职缺，我就过来了。对
，很喜欢打电动，然后以前也玩过很多的 DOTA 类游戏，电脑上的，然后。就是后面手机版推出了推出那个《传说对决》，我就很有兴趣。之前的队友找我一起打业余的比赛，然后一开始我们只是想说去拿奖金啊，然后试试看打比赛，就是去享受打比赛的感觉。然后后来刚好有升降赛这个机会，然后让我们赢了有打职业这个。机会，然后我们就来试试看，然后让我来打我的梦想这样。我参加了第二届传说对决的城市赛，然后也获得亚军，然后之后就有那个职业战队找上门，我也说服了我爸妈，同意让我进入职业战队，然后成为职业选手。我本身就很喜欢 DOTA 这款游戏，然后接触传说对决之后，就。想想要爬得更高，然后我的理想也是把我自己的兴趣当成变成一个工作。传说对决其实扮演一个就像是家人角色，他就像我爸一样，他跟我吃，跟我住，然后我会努力的想表现给他看。那我就在排位上努力争取。那如果在排行榜上面，我爸他看得到，他就会给我好的零用钱。我的薪水，没错，就是张开眼闭上眼，都是传说对决。我觉得传说对决现在在我生活中已经变成一个理所当然的一部分，因为这多年经验的累积吧，然后现在变成比较是，如果你要专注在这一份工作、这份游戏上，你要花花费很大量的精神跟体力，所以就每天都在摧残我的身心。传说队员其实改变了我很多，然后融入了我的生活的一部分，然后帮助了我很多啊，不管是个性上，还是心态上，还是跟大家的相处，就已经变成我我不可缺的一部分。嗯、呃，我高中想进职业了，然后就是进入职业，真真正进入职业之后，去跟我之前的想法有些出入，对，就是没有想象那么轻松。然后放假也放得特别少，对，然后其实也没什么时间陪家人啊、女朋友啊，大部分的时间就花在那个传说对决身上。我觉得努力是会有回报的，就是上一届我们的成绩也也打出来了。我们放很少假，可是我们就是努力练习，然后获得好成绩，然后没也没想过那么快就有机会可以出国比赛，对。传说对决二周年生日快乐！习惯有你，斗争来赢。传说对决两周年生日快乐！习惯无力，到底来牙。到底来牙。习惯无力，到底来牙。No need to pray for me. Come on, no need to cry for me. No need to run to this wrong place. No one's gonna break me.
What's up guys and welcome back to the GCS IMD2 with me is the source. We just finished our first match which was a win, the second win of their season 4 Monster Shield against HKA. And now we have Flash Wolves versus Mad. Now Flash Wolves narrowly avoided dropping their series yesterday to Monster Shield, taking that at the very end off of a tiny bit of a throw from Monster Shield, but good comeback from them. But Flash Wolves certainly showing weakness. They are still at the top, tie with J team, but they're facing a mad team who has shown some life in the past few weeks, so they can't really take this one for granted either. We'll see if they can take care of business, of course. And it's missing in the mid lane. This this was the real the real question. And to that point, according to um it, it look just quickly looking at Wikipedia, uh missing is quantified as an actual substitute replacement, whereas every other player that we have seen transitioned in apparently is somebody who is already on the roster. So missing is somebody coming into the Flash Wolves from not on the original roster uh, of players. So they're actually that actually might be an issue. Like she she might be in a position where he cannot play right now. Um, after looking at that, and and she she was good can, from memory. Yeah, she 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 was good, and so that's my concern with this matchup. Well, you know, it's like both these matchups are a little weird. They can go you know a couple ways. This is the problem that we saw with Flash Wolves was there was a slight lack of execution ability for missing, which opened them up to losing or dropping a map to Monster Shield. Now they're up against Mad. Still a team towards the bottom, still a team struggling to get themselves back up, but performing better than HKA, performing better than Monster Shield overall, and you still have that deficiency in the... You have the possible issue in the mid lane with missing. It looks like they think that's missing that they're highlighting right now. Zooming in on yeah, I believe so. I believe. So, so like, they're talking about this this, this new player trade, and I don't know if that means that Shishi is permanently out, but it would appear that Missing is in for the foreseeable future. Well, let's take a look at Mad here, and seems like their normal roster, Bevel, Sor, Shinyi, Ronin, and Ohm. Ohm, I believe he has, he's had his most damage taken title taken away from him so <laughs> unfortunately the feeds weren't enough <laughs> yeah one can only feed so hard <laughs> he tried he tried to receive all the damage unfortunately it's, it's better to actually get farmed before you feed because then you could take even more damage in any case we're just making fun of him matt has actually done reasonably lately they were kind of a joke <laughs> to put it not lightly, in the earlier start, start stages of this tournament, of this league. And lately they are able to beat one, which is a big victory for them. They also were able to beat MS. And that was when MS was a little bit frisky as well. That's when they started to bring up their game. So they've been doing okay. But that said, I don't believe they have a win versus anyone better than Team 1. No, I don't believe so either. And, uh... Today's, today's a today's a difficult day for for Mad because they are technically still in mathematical contention for uh, playoffs, I believe. If they were to win all of their remaining matches, they could possibly sneak into the fourth spot, depending on the results of a couple of other matches. They would need to win this versus Flash Wolves, then beat J Team and beat AHK. So they have three matches left, putting them at seven and seven. And then they would need SMG to drop games, one to drop games. So they they still have a chance. There is still a possibility for them. So I mean, any anything can happen in the GCS. I don't necessarily see that happening, but this would be the first step. And if they can capitalize on beating up in the mid lane or winning that mid lane significantly with good juggle and jungle support, they might open up an avenue to beating Flash Wolves. Yeah, I just have a little bit less confidence in them, even though we've seen MS really take it to Flash Wolves. I think that Flash Wolves would have to have another disappointing performance, and that's certainly yeah. possible with missing in there instead of Shishi. But I feel like I feel like MS is a little bit more frisky than Mad at the moment, and they can 
scare teams a little bit more. Whereas Mad has been just kind of consistently not as good. They've shown some good games, but we'll see if they're able to do it this time. I'm looking for Shinyi to really make the play. Shinyi is sore to get in there and make stuff happen. Yeah, and I, I, I agree with you. I don't, I don't really see it happening. But that is the avenue they have to like. That is the avenue they have to somehow open for the side of Matt. They I can need... kind of see it happening. It just it feels like a like a five percenter to me. If Flash Wolves, Flash Wolves has to also... play bad and Matt has to play well. That's the rest. Well, of Flash me. Wolves has to draft badly. That was the key thing we saw was Monster Shield. I mean, we we talk about their coach being you know being a um, being a fun guy to watch. You know, very emotional, very upbeat. Uh has been bringing forth really good drafting, a great adaptation to the new Snake draft we are currently encountering. Good Flash idea. Wolves seemed a little caught unawares during that drafting process. The question is, is can Mad outdraft Flash Wolves? Because that's step one. Well, Mad is already just hopping in the bandwagon and bounding out the Richter and the Ignis. We saw a great adaptation from MS this last series as well, where they were like, well, you can have the Ignis, it's fine. We're not going to take him early. We're not going to waste one of the, our, our early picks. And they consistently got high-impact heroes. And Matt is already starting off on a weird foot. Like, I don't understand the first yeah. big battle line. Yeah, I, I would expect, like, Omen Mage, Yebeneth Mage, uh, something in that category. Yebeneth Valheim, but uh, Valheim has been fairly lackluster overall. Um, I guess they want to match the Roxy with a Valheim, but it's just... <laughs> I feel like you're asking for trouble. You, you've basically just shown both of your side lanes and committed a side laner who can be very easily abused in the Valheim. If I'm Flash Wolves, I now grab something like Mage Zephys and just jump on Valheim and make his life a living hell. Right. And Like, what's Yabadeth going to do? He's going to try and CC that, that combo, but he could easily be getting beaten by the Roxy. Uh, Pira is not where I thought Flash Wolves would go with this. I don't think you need to go that far down the rabbit hole support wise. Mina, Crash, Chognar are all still up. That's curious. Um, I suppose with the Yebeneth and the Valheim, it's a bit of a safer situation here for the Pira, as we saw Team MS celebrating watching the game. But the I just I feel uh, Pira, Pira's been <laughs> nerfed so hard. That disaffected sigh is what we're seeing with this Pira. I feel like teams just hold on too long, and they just see you know Pira was working before. They look at her like I feel like I feel like they react too hard to buffs and too and not enough to nerfs the teams. Because they'll see a buff, like, oh, let's pick Ignis. He looks like he's been buffed like crazy. It's like, no, not, not that great, actually. And then, since Pyrrha was such a part of the meta earlier, now, even though she's been nerfed pretty significantly, teams are still like, oh, she's, she's okay. We can still play her. It's like, mm, I'm not so sure about that. Uh, what? Zephys is still up, Mad. They don't need to go down the Slim's rabbit hole. Literally. Uh, <laughs> the literal that's... rabbit hole. The little rabbit hole that is Slims because so here's here's the reason I don't like this. I don't like Tank Valheim. I don't think that it is as as universally applicable to all situations as we see out of these teams. Right. It has a purpose. It's like, okay, we're gonna get this super uh control heavy side laning marksman. He's going to give us range, he's going to give us slows, he's going to give us crowd control, tons of utility. It has a purpose. But it should really be a secondary option because you've thrown away, like, like you can't go Omen now. Superman is not banned. Like, that is fairly significant when it comes to additional side laners that you you didn't need to go down that specific course of action now you've put yourself into double marksman you've made yourself vulnerable to a significant amount of dive uh flash will haven't fully capitalized on that yet but still like this is it may be comfortable but that's that's a dangerous comfort to have if you're mad looking to make a playoff run yorn band out here 
<laughs> I do like the Mina ban here from Flash Wolves because that's one of the scary parts about having to go against this comp with Apira. Now Marja picked up here. Which, which means, means support Yebeneth. Yeah, Yebeneth is going to be on that support. And that is <laughs> that is a fairly strong side lane, but I feel like Roxy can kind of deal with Marja. And they're going to go with Arduin? I'm fine with that. That Cull dives past the front line. That is more than a reasonable enough answer. That that gives you two heroes who are jumping into the back line. Roxy, who's running up with the Pyrrha. You find a really good magical damage source, something really high impact like the Raz, which is not what I am seeing. Right? Mm -hmm. Missing hero. I forgot about missing hero pool for a minute. Uh, but Liliana is still up. I like don't this... think. I just don't think missing is capable of playing. That's a problem. <laughs> That's a serious problem. If she if she she is not. Just taking a break, you know. You better up, be in like, up the, the country, Went up the country for the weekend. No, 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 no. I don't want to be hurt, but like what no, I'm no, saying no. is, is <laughs> saying like you better, you better be a good reason. <laughs> exactly. Like if he's legitimately out of the game for a while, Flash Wolves just took a power hit on a level that I'm not sure they're going like J Team and AHQ. Are rejoicing right now flash wolves like just took a significant like draft flexibility power hit to the point where i don't see them making aic whereas before i thought it was going to be a really intensely close matchup between them like like the top three the top three could all beat each other flash wolves have just dropped a power level to me well mad was flirting with the alistair they pick up the raz in the end and Shinyi has been pretty impressive on these heroes. Say what you will about Mad, but Shinyi has been pretty decent in all these matchups. Shinyi, Shinyi is the Hua land of bottom tier teams. <laughs> kind of. Well, technically, one is in the bottom half of the <laughs> standings. No, 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 no. Like, Shinyi, Shinyi is the Hua, Shinyi is the Hua land of the bottom half of the uh, bottom half. Like, the bottom three, you mean? <laughs> Because mm, one, because Wallen is in the bottom half. <laughs> okay, fine, he's in the bottom half. But like, similar, similar scenario. You know, and you, you, you see what I'm trying to, I'm trying to put forth. Yeah. I think that, <laughs> the phrasing think wasn't that, there. I think that Shingy, I think that Shingy is is he's good, is better than his team's position. <laughs> right, exactly. He he could easily be in a closer contentious point. Like he could be, like he could easily be on on SMG right now. Like Which... position wise. Which is a very unfortunate thing for Flash Wolves because we see all these great mid laners, even on the lower end teams, and yet Flash Wolves haven't been able to find themselves one. And we haven't really seen enough of him missing to say that he's been mm. that great. I'm seeing plenty of missing right now. I'm seeing his hero pool, and that terrifies me. Right. Like, that, that once we start getting towards playoffs, because right now... Well, Flash we haven't Wolves seen anything good is what I'm starting to get out there. Yeah. He, he literally has not shown Liliana or Raz. He has not shown that the S-tier mages. Hasn't shown it in Natalia. Has not shown a Jinnar. Has shown nothing but Crixie and uh, Ignis. Well, speaking of Shinyi and Missing, that duel coming out right here. I'm going to be being annoying. Same thing with the Pyrrha. Going to be an invade here up into the top lane. Can Bevel hold on? Looks like the Yebeneth is rotating around. This will be pretty contentious at the moment. Oh, I'm getting a lot done here. He... Looks like Wayne might be able to steal it out, and finally does, but because he sh shared the experience there, he just now picks up two, so that was a little bit dicey for a moment there, as he didn't have his second ability to dash out, but gets out perfectly fine. And meanwhile, looks like Heroes is actually taking their buff here, so... Oh, okay, looks like an invade here from Store, and they're going to be able to take this buff. Looked for a moment like Flash Wolves might get three out of four, but good rotation here. From Sora and crew, trying to take them out. Shinyi just, just, just abusing missing at the moment. And she's going to have to go back to base. Yeah, uh, I would have liked there to be more support. Lose a little bit of farm in the mid, secure the additional buff, because now you've looked at a buff tray, and then honestly, uh, Wayne is fairly far behind, but we do see Ohm putting pressure onto Ron. Ron will be fine. Um, but yeah, looking quickly at gold, it's 200 gold oh, no, advantage. Wayne. <laughs> 
Yeah, it's 200 gold advantage for the Slims over Wayne just because he got to clear all of his jungle and got the buff steal back, whereas Wayne is now finally just clearing out his jungle. We've got 8 seconds on this Abyssal Dragon, and the members of uh, Mad are a little, are overall closer in experience to getting their ultimates. You've still got uh, Ron at level 2, and it doesn't look good positioning-wise for them to be able to go in there. They have to go through Xing Yi, and they have to go through Ohm. That's going to be the Heroes? stun up, but not much of a problem. Hero step forward. Oh, he tried to go in for the smite. He almost had it. He's going to get the Agnes Graph. That's a huge amount of healing, but he's going to get CC'd out. That's going to be a red buff. Actually going over to Ohm, so he'll, he'll secure that red buff, and that's well, already a great opening for Mad. The... the the issue there for Flash Wolves is that Wayne got two red buffs early in the game, and Soar got two blue buffs, which meant that Wayne, <laughs> the Necroz is a very mana heavy, or he uses a lot of mana, basically, so he needs those Sage buffs to keep going. Even though they buffed the mana usage, which was very much needed, it's still difficult for him to keep going without that blue buff, especially when you're jungling. So, he actually had to he had to recall back to base for a second time this game before the Abyssal fight even started, and that meant that Mad certainly had the positioning there. Going to be pushing mm, up onto this tower. See. Oh, there's the Nature's Realm. I'm trying to chase out Ice Fang. They're nearly going to get... Yes, they are going to get it because trees have big booties as well, as it turns out. As heroes... Trees got... I, I like big branches, and I cannot lie. <laughs> there's That's the one. I think uh, I think that's where that I think that's where that joke was going, like somewhere in there. Somewhere. Um and anyways, that's gonna be pressure onto missing. Ohm's doing a very good job of just moving around the map and wreaking a lot of yeah. havoc. Ronan going very, very low. He's gonna be able to ghost walk away, so he's gonna survive this. Here comes a possible flank opportunity. Slims did take the scenic route, which ends up with them not being able to completely collapse on that. Shingy is going to at least just set up the pressure, get oh. some hit on the one, oh. puts a little bit of damage in there, but Ohm, ooh, Ohm needs to be very careful. Does not manage to get the, does actually get the stun off on the very edge, the final tick of those seeds. Sets that up for them, and now that's Ron out of position. That should be a very easy kill onto Apira. I mean, he'll, he'll throw out what Jukes he can. Actually, is surviving, and they're focused on b dropping this tower. Here comes Arduin on, on the backside of this. Xing Yi in a little bit of trial. Ice Fang gets off a rend that slows things down just a little bit. Oh, oh, he's looking for there. an opportunity. They managed to Agnes get the grass. spear onto him, but the Agnes Grass pulls him back in. He will get an additional soul, but they're not finishing any of the targets. They finally commit, and that's going to be mad picking up a kill. <laughs> Oh, a little like, bit of shenanigans. I will get the most damage received if this is the last thing I do. I will come back into this fight with 10% health. I do not care. I am a tree. <laughs> oh, good old Ohm. Ohm, Ohm. He's trying to reclaim his most <laughs> damage. Most damage absorbed, I think, is the kindest way to say it, as opposed to um, most times voted, fed. <laughs> most likely, voted most likely to feed in high school. Oh my god. It ended up working out for them, though. They traded out one for one and got the tower in the end there. No, Boom. his pressure has been great. Honestly, other than that one play being a little over-aggressive, his rotations have been very good. He's cut off a lot of opportunities. He's been backing up sword. That's going to be the stun heroes? onto heroes. Slow, stun, a little bit more Ooh. damage. Does not manage to get out the Agnes Grasp. He did, That's actually, but uh, oh, just died. He did go through. Okay, so he just, he just got popped the buff. Gets reset. Ohm is going to keep Ice Fang at bay. Missing steps forward. Tries to use all of his skills, but doesn't get a whole lot for it. Buff goes over to the side of Mad. And they've been keeping good pressure on all of these neutral objectives, stealing away camps to Abyssal Dragons to their name. Meanwhile, Ronan's kind of been free farming. Just just, just chilling. Got flashy boots plus a Bareth's, and now pressure onto the tower. Ohm looking for his opportunity. Wayne goes in, gets damage on the bevel. That's going to be the flash away. Uh, I don't know if you can... If you could really commit after a Bevel Flickers and Shingy doesn't decide to uh, continue to commit. Oh, power Surge. No, Shingy, Shingy's not fighting that. Is he? Anyway, oh, regardless, looks like they're going to just fight over this for a little bit. But Ohm has really been the key to all of this. Because if he weren't being hyper-aggressive, there wouldn't be the space for this two marksman, this very, this very squishy comp to be able to get in there. Ohm is just taking all the damage for his team, and that's what he needs to do. If he sits back and tries to peel, that's going to be very bad for Mad here. And you can see their aggression is really working out from Redwood Rush and from Ohm, just to just to show them who's boss. And looks like this tower is going to go down. Flicker from Ron here from the Nature's Rally. And she's going to take a lot of damage in the meantime. Wayne trying to get in there, but gets completely obliterated and baited by that Ghost Walk there as Ohm continuing to just stare danger in the face and say, I ain't scared, man. 
Yeah, this double marksman is managing to survive pretty much on the back of Ohm and Ohm and Ching Yi, just setting up a lot of positioning plays for them, and then Sora doing a good job to capitalize. <laughs> That's going to be a lot of damage on Ohm. He's going to get slow. Ninja's Realm! Actually drops the Ninja's Realm! It was a complete bait. They're getting huge damage and stopping Missing from being able to get out of there. Good healing from Ron, but that is going to transition them into an additional objective. That is their third Abyssal Dragon back to back to back. And now we are starting to see the Valheim build into his tank, the tank end of his build. There hasn't been a coordinated effort from Flash Wolves. I honestly, th honestly think that they started off their draft well off the first pick, and every single pick after that has been an issue for them. And damage on the Ice Fang, call away. Ohm is just, he's just roaming on in. He's just in their face. The, the, for the, forest is, the forest is his home. You, you can't mess with him when he's, when he's chilling with his trees. And Yebedev is the absolute bait master. He will force multiple members in. He actually likes fighting two to three members, uh, preferably three, as you can get multiple redwood brushes in and heal right back up to full with that. Oh, this gets uh, this gets half leashed. It? Half leashed. Okay, there you go. But Yebedev loves to have multiple members there so he can redwood rush a lot and get the nature's realm on multiple heroes and just heal right back to full and it slows the entire team allows your marksman to get in there and just clean up all right so the members of mad looking for the next opportunity that's going to be a slow on to run he will walk away and we're starting to see some some significant items being finished up the crit is there for the slims you've got marja who's getting you know around. building yeah, I, I, I don't mind it at this it, stage with just the sheer amount of magic damage they have between Mad, Ching Yi, and yeah. Ronin. This is one of the situations where it's fine. Ronin. Individually, it's not great, but because they have so much magic damage on their side, Ching Yi is going to be doing even more damage if they're in the vicinity. Anyway, lots of damage coming out here from Ching Yi, continuing to throw those power surges in. Everyone's getting low on the side of Flash Holes, and no one is getting low on the side of Mad. Multiple members go down. And that is just a complete beatdown here from Matt on the Flash Wolves. Yeah, despite despite having a double marksman, they've they've put themselves in a position to have all of the damage necessary. Uh, my concerns about them not being tanky enough uh, really don't matter when they're setting up the place that Agnes they are. Grass. That's gonna be Ohm pulled in by the Agnes Grass, but he will survive. He's, he's walking in. He's, lo <laughs> he's looking for an opportunity. He does get very very deep in enemy territory and just <laughs> dashes away. That's another tower that's gonna be dropping members of mad are starting to run the table there it doesn't look like there's a lot that the flash wolves can do and they didn't have good pressure in the early game from the mid they got beat by ohm in a couple of scenarios uh mad is just outplaying the members of flash wolves and i mean you can play with a weakened draft if you can execute it perfectly but minor cracks in the flash wolves armor is resulting in mad quickly capitalizing and just saying if you're going to give us the opportunity to win we are going to take you up on it absolutely and other than ohm who we talked about a lot here i want to commend both shinny for the place and soar for being in the right place at the right time most of this game just capitalizing on every opportunity that ohm has opened up for them you know, oftentimes you can you look at a support or what have you a frontliner and it looks like they're just crazy. Like, why are you up in their face? What are you doing? You're going to die. And because the the members of Matt have been in position, and in particular Soar, to take advantage of Ohm being up there, they it's just everything that Ohm does looks good. And Ron dies. Good, good night, play Ron. by Ohm and Chingy. They just they just set that up easy. <laughs> easy, game, just easy game, easy like, yeah, easy game, easy life. Well, Bevel, Bevel, he's also breached like solid tankiness. Like he's literally just a CC tank. He's a range CC tank. It's all about. Oh him. my god, it's Flicker Ghost Walk in. What is going on, Rodin? You're a madman. A dive. Uh, hmm? he literally he's gonna get out alive. Gets the heal. That's gonna be game. It's just he just flickered Ghost Walk in. That is the most reckless thing you could possibly do as a Marja, and it doesn't matter. Ohm's literally standing under the core because who cares? Mad. Just dominates Flash Wolves. It, it's, uh, Did not see that coming. Flash... Did not see that coming. I mean, after the first Abyssal Dragon, it kind of looked like that was the way this was going to go. Like, there isn't an answer. You, It's a double marksman composition from Mad, but... You fail well, to pick the dive necessary. You fail to pick the damage necessary. The you got is... some dive between Nakroth and Arduin, but you never got an opportunity to use it. And I, Ohm just kind of didn't let you do anything. I think it really... I, I, we've been 
berating or not berating, but you've been going on about this point for a lot here. But taking out Shishi for missing, Flash Wolf's entire strength was team fights. It yep. wasn't macro. It wasn't. We constantly saw them get behind one one or two thousand gold versus the lower teams in the league. But they would turn it around at an opportune moment and just wipe out the other members, uh, wipe out the other team in a fight that they had no business winning just because of their superior micro. And they're just not allowing that to happen, or they're not getting that for themselves in this game because they just don't have missing doing enough. And in general, it seems like the confidence is just not there for them. Yeah, and when they did manage to do it up against Monster Shield... The game where they had that crazy turnaround in team fight, both times they had somebody on something massive playmaking. They had heroes on Kilgroth one game where he managed to just find the backline of Monster Shield repeatedly, and this time they had him on Roxy. Good, has playmaking potential, but doesn't fully set up. And in the second game that they won against Monster Shield yesterday, they had a fully built Violet. They had, they, had a, they, had a full, they had a full build Violet. They had a Roxy who could pick targets. They had a Mina who could also set up really big CC plays. And in this game, they didn't have that. They had Pyro who didn't have enough to get the job done. They had Crixie whose damage was lackluster. And then they had Arduin who didn't actually get to show up to the fight. There, there was not a time where his team was all together and he could be that super big front line and give them the space to get anything done. Yeah, they never even really had a 5v5 that entire time. And part of that was... <laughs> Mori, what are you doing there? <laughs> the MS is just really happy today. Anyway, um, yeah, it just Ohm was in their face the entire time and just constantly squeezing them out of objectives and making them run away at any time in the, the match there. And from the time that they got the Abyssal, which was a result of the Slim stealing out the blue buff on the left side of the map, from that point forward, it was just a snowball. So, yeah, yeah take a like look this, at this fight right here, there's no damage for Flash Wolves. The only damage is missing. So they know they have to retreat, <laughs> and then they end up just getting poked. His name and, is so and, apt there. <laughs> anyway. Again, and, like, just repeatedly, they picked double marksman but didn't pick enough dive, and then didn't capitalize early on their opportunity to use the fact that they were tanky beginning of the game as a tank you can really get in people's faces and they don't have the damage to kill you and you have the health bar to deal with them they needed to go in and make really big plays and get on top of the slims and put a lot of pressure onto him and make the make the valheim you know have to back up a bunch and mad just they won one early objective they got a really good steal they got a head in jungle and they never looked back, and Flash Wolves just kind of looked lost trying to find a way to stop them. It just seems like if you don't have an absolute Necroth Master, he's not really the pick for you. Because he's not he's just not gonna get enough done, especially because it takes him a while to get his damage going. They a lot of teams are building him Leviathan. They might want to think about going with Soul Reaver now because without extra extra auto attacks and the magic damage up front, but it's just really it takes him too long to get going. And they get outplayed by Marksman in the very early stages of the game. And it requires either snowballing in a different fashion or somehow surviving to the late game. Not to mention the fact that Flash Wolves banned out Lindis Cricknack. Those were their first two bands. And then they took Necroth then they took Necroth in the second rotation. Like they Took all of them. They took all like the two two of the best junglers out of the game from the start. And Mad and actually banning out their own Yebeneth this time, which I don't I think, think that's is... fine. I well, think that's fine. Is... Everybody play. Everybody plays it. And if you're right. not gonna pick it, well, they might get it first. I just think that you kind of want to force Flash Wolves to either ban that or ban Richter, which we see here. Just kind of squeeze them on the bans and make them choose. Maybe they're hunting for Ignis. <laughs> Maybe we'll have to I, see. I, if, if we don't see it banned by them, they're hunting for it. They're well, trying to see if Flash Wolves will give them Ignis or Roxy. Either Ignis, Lindis, or Cricknack is making it through. And if the Ignis or gets Roxy. through, I don't think it needs a first pick. Yeah, Roxy as well. 
I uh, if I'm mad, I don't first pick it. If I'm mad, I first pick probably Cricknack. Whatever's left over, right? The Lindus of the Cricknack. I think, okay, Ban Omen. Yeah, that's 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 the way to get one of these, but I feel like Mad just screwed up the draft math. Now there are three major there there's Lindus, Cricknack, yeah. and Roxy. There are three major priorities. Flash Wolves gets two. All I have to do is throw away ban something yeah, here. Exactly. Just throw you away. Ban the a ban mage. Here. Actually you, you, you ban you ban a mage you don't want to play. So here's where you'd ban Liliana or Raz because mm -hmm. we know that missing has that limited pool and you've now turned it into you will get Amy's and a jungler, or you can take Landis Cricknack and then. Who? Oh my uh, okay. Land Landis Cricknack. This should be the answer for Flash Wolves. They will get Landis Cricknack plus. Uh, well, I guess missing is is we're still seeing missing lean into the Crixie, so it's not as valuable. If this were a different mid laner, it would be super value. Well. Still take Crixie, Linda's crack deck, like, I, right I think out. I think the kind of poke style mages work a lot better when you have a marksman on your side for that extra poke because the problem with poke style mages is that their damage comes every few seconds, which is not great when you're trying to when you need to kill someone, right? Yeah. So I think having the exactly like you said here, the Lindus which is what we call it, guys. It's an inside joke. Lane Lindus and the Kricknack would be great here. And Don't let them have it. No, don't let them have Lindus. Even <sighs> with Crash, uh, even with Crash, you've just opened up a world of hurt towards Mad, who... I, I, there, are other, there are other high CC tank possibilities. Although you've banned... The Chognar, so you're gonna get value on the Metamorphosis. Mad should answer back here with Lindis plus whatever solo laner they want really badly. Uh, they get they get priority on on the solo lane in that in that scenario, so like they can take Roxy. Yeah, Roxy Lindis. That's there you go. Yeah, <laughs> they hovered that Valheim, but that was no. No, they they were sc scrolling through. That's all. Uh, okay. Yeah, that's, that's exactly what you want here. That's just perfect. And well, now than... we get to see we get to see Shingy, Shingy the the hall into the bottom. See if he can play the. Well, okay, the I Ignis. was a little bit disappointed in this Ignis. I don't feel like it's first pick worthy, but it does take away Ignis from missing, and it feels like it's probably missing's best hero. Which is weird because it only just got good. So what was he playing before? Crixie. Seriously, like, was he a really a Crixie main? Yeah. Like, that's really. <laughs> Again, I'm not, we're not. We're not trying. <laughs> I'm so, trying to think so of I other. Do, I'm trying to think of other I poke do, mages. I do want to address this, the stream so they don't think that we're just hating on missing, but we're trying to indicate the step down he is in comparison to Shishi, who could play the Raz and the Liliana and whatever else Flash Wolves needed. They've taken a hit to their team fighting. They've also taken a hit to their overall draft flexibility. And we've only seen him, because he's only been around for two days, this is only his second day on stage, but we have only seen him play Ignis and Crixie. Maybe he played Preda before. <laughs> no, well, <laughs> Preda mains. Well, Preda was always the fallback when, like, the big three or big four of Liliana, Tulin, Flash, Rez... Not Raz. Um, L'Oreal was banned out, so. But it's been a long time. Like, there's been plenty of time to play other things. Yeah, but just trying to go down the timeline. That's fair. That is fair. Let's see how, how far down the, the, the theoretical mage rabbit hole we go. I, I really don't want to see another Crixie, although this, uh, this composition I like it a little bit more with, as long as they find another really high source of damage. Um, this would be a good opportunity, honestly, for Elaine Violet, in my opinion. This is this is her chance to shine. You just build her straight crit, go with go with a, a high damage marksman there. You could maybe go a Yorn, but I'm still not the biggest Yorn fan. Um, unless like you've got a real good setup for it. This is a good, decent setup for a Yorn though, with having the crash. Well, we've had a run on side later bands here, as Superman. Kilgroth, Valheim, and Marsha were all banned out. So Flash Wolves trying to get one of the 
quote unquote premier ones left here, hovering over this Xenial. But neither Xenial nor Malak win against Roxy. Yeah. Hmm. It does. It, I don't know. What is with like the side laner hate? There is a side laner hate now that we have more bands. It's like more bands, ban more side laners. It's always the second half of the the ban stage as well. Like look, like four side laner bands for Matt. They banned four, have picked one, and over on the other side, two have been banned by Flash Wolves, and two have been picked. Like, I'm not gonna it, comment on the butterfly. Nah, that's not real. That's not real. That's a figment of our imagination. That Thane is real, though. That Thane is really real. Yoma is... fine. I'm okay with that. They do... If they have a good Yoma, it technically wins. They technically win both lanes. Both side lanes. Well, this leaves Flash Wolves, by the way, without a Marksman. Yes. And now I'm again concerned for their draft. Because... I, okay, okay, okay. So Deathball, Deathball, mm. Jinnar, Krickknack. You could do it. You you can totally kill that back line. They, ha they have I a think, window. I think I'd rather have the Jinnar than the Flash. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. go back to Jinnar. Because you have... Yeah, the Krickknack and Jinnar dive. You have... I mean, that, that's the death ball. You have the metamorphosis come in, and then you exuberance on top of them. I don't think Cyclone's going to do as much there. You, you, you've got three sources of A. You've got two sources of AOE CC engage, a heavy diving jungler. Wait, wait, a, wait, 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 wait. Missing his hero pool is Ignis, Crixie, Flash. Uh, <laughs> What's going on? Go back on? to Jinnar, bro. Go back to Jinnar. Jinnar's way easier. <laughs> you just press exuberance and run in there after the, after the metamorphosis. Okay. Crixie, Jinnar, Flash. That, um, hmm. I'm still, I, I still, okay, so because they have the Krickknack, Wayne could single-handedly carry this game. Wayne could. Right, especially like, because of the support he has behind him, between... Exactly, like, with, with how much dive potential there is, with how many big AoE circles of doom, and circles of safety with Xenia. Like they Xenia really does a little could... bit of damage with Angelic Splendor. A little bit. <laughs> yeah. A, li a little bit. A little bit. But like they have the potential that Wayne could kill Shingy, Soar, and Ronin. He could do it. He could kill one of them for sure, maybe a second and even possibly a third with the right support. Well, what mm -hmm. makes Krickneck so good as well is his damage is just so insane and he has incredible speed. So I would say even the Roxy is in danger. We've seen this time and again the Crickneck catching out what is normally a very tanky side laner off guard because you don't. Oh yeah, think especially at the early game, especially the level, the level four gank, the the full rotation level four gank from a Crickneck. Red red blue level four dive the Roxy. We've seen that work. Right. Um, no matter who it is, with, no matter how yeah, tanky they are, yeah. they just die. Yeah. No. Roxy, Xenial, uh, Malak, Marja, Malak. Like we've seen every single side laner die to the level four Crickneck gank. Totally a thing, totally possible. Very much an opportunity for the Crickneck to get himself rolling. Flash Wolves, this this strategy is way more cohesive for Flash Wolves. It has a clear goal: get the Crickneck rolling, have massive AOE team fights. Flash comes in, gets strong enough to be able to put pressure on the Squishies. It's really difficult to pin him down. There's a clear goal, but Mad has. See, look the. I uh, want to say the, the, the first entrapment doesn't do damage. See, told you. <laughs> this was okay, our conversation okay. from from two days ago. <laughs> the first one, guys, you. you can't throw it on top of the bu the buff, or else it doesn't go down. Bevel, Did Bevel, uh, no, uh, Bevel hello? didn't steal it. Yeah, Bevel just screwed up royally. That's a concern. Although they are putting pressure on the heroes, it is going to go over to the Linda. So if they kill heroes, this will even things out, <sighs> and that's pretty massive. Are we watching the GCS? What is this? Yeah, this looks this looks like some this looks like like bottom of the barrel RPL right now. Not to not to hate too badly, but that's the slow onto Wayne. Oh, Sora walk to the side. You walk to the wrong side. Can they get the stun? They need a little bit more damage. They should be able to get in range of him. There comes the cleave. There comes the damage. Yep. He's gonna try and run away. No, Linda's peeled off. 
I don't know about that. I, well, I they end up getting in the end. Kill, you want okay. that kill on the Lindus. You want that kill on Sasaur Fang, taking a bunch of additional missing? damage. Sasaur getting dropped low. Sorlo? That decent damage from missing and what they want out of him. But it ends up being a three for one at the end of all of this early game trading. And that's going to be a Wailing Blade stun on the missing. Missing goes back in. I don't really know if you want that. Double buff on the Shang Yi, so. I think I figured it out, by the way. Missing what? can only play Poke Heroes, and Flash is technically a Poke Hero. <laughs> Ah, <laughs> technically, technically, you, you jump in there, you do some damage, and you run away. So technically, okay. Well, we'll so see. they're gonna start up this abyssal dragon. Good little bit of damage from missing, but Ching Yi is definitely proving that he understands how to set himself up on this. Um, the Ignis. Ignis. Uh, we've got a little bit of a duel between the side laners. It is going to go in favor of heroes, so he'll win that out, taking away the Spirit Sentinel. We haven't seen the uh, Abyssal Dragon be finished up again because there's been so much skirmishing back and forth. Linus has now rotated to her half of the jungle. This is a window for the set of Flash holes to be able to get it, but they're not coordinated to do that just yet, and they're going to focus on clearing out their jungle. Well, at the end of it all, somehow we have... A gold tie, <laughs> despite a the lot of gold was lost in top. Yeah. Uh, I think I think that's the big thing is a lot of gold was lost in the top half of the map. But Ron <clears throat> taking free damage. Yeah, shingy has been doing a good job poking here and kind of showing in a way how this Ignis is supposed to be played. The rain of fire is really big here for Shinji to be able to land those because they don't really have all that much GC outside of a few slows here and there. Perhaps a Wailing Blade or Ohm doing some crazy stuff. But uh, here comes a lot of damage out from Wayne here. Ron just jumps at him. Says, I have a shield now. Just fear me. Mach Punch is going to miss. And Missing's going to back off. Members of MAD looking set themselves up on this team fight. But that is a level 4 crashed. So. And there's a bush party. They're just waiting. Yeah, that's 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 a bad that's a bad time waiting to happen for the side of Mad. And I'm gonna pull this one more time with Ronan's help. They're just trying to keep it busy because they're not they don't see the Krakenak anywhere on the map. Things gold is building up an advantage for Mad because there isn't all of this farming going on because the Lindus is staying more true to form on that. They're gonna put a little bit of damage onto heroes, just clear out the waves and reset themselves again. Do you see the Lindus top? So maybe Flash Wolves take this, but it's 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 a very short rotation for Lindus in oh. uh, in motion. Yeah, Wang didn't get there right away, so he's now going to start burning it down. He's going to get pulled here to the left side. Shin, you're getting a lot of damage. Here comes a Metamorphosis jumping onto Ohm. He does have that passive still there. Here comes the shock. Oh, Ohm will rally and charge out. Yeah, Ronin. Ronin comes into this fight though, but he took a lot of damage from Wayne uh, before this even started. The Abyssal Dragon's getting mad here, just throwing out some damage of himself. Wayne taking a nice Wailing Blade to the face there. As these shields come up here on the side of Flash Wolves. Nice Valiant Charge in, but he doesn't have his passive left, which means he's very, very low. But there is the King's Glory trying to take members out, but he is going to go down in the end. And so, too, does the Abyssal Dragon go over to Flash Wolves. So they, they, they get the top tower for all of that, but that they, was a really great two-man defense play. They don't play. get it. Oh, they don't get it. Wow. Lindus I know. They've got a mini wave. They have a mini wave. They've got it. Okay, Lindus doesn't have attack speed, so it actually takes a while for her to take stuff down like that. Um, I was it, like, that was so good from okay, Shingy on Ron, just burst him, throw the full combo. Uh, Omen Ronin did an amazing job keeping that Abyssal Dragon going, and I just don't know why they didn't like flank in there and kill them all. Like, Mad could have killed them all. Well, I suppose it was kind of dicey. Right, they they either had to commit bot or commit top, and they felt like, well, our members are getting low. I think that Ohm and Ronan were like, well, we're kind of getting low. Maybe not take this fight, especially because a five v five team fight. There's just lots of circles of death for Flash Wolves. So I feel like Mad wants to play a more guerrilla style in this game. True, uh, their 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 rotational capabilities are are definitely their advantage other than, um, the, other than the flash and the crew. also interesting side note that's a mr stabby i didn't realize that sword did that uh what oh, uh, hello 
<laughs> Why would you do that, Sor? Did you not read the patch notes, Sor? Did you do, did you did you not you do your reading for homework? Did you did you skip too much class? It does Cause... technically have more damage, but yeah, it just feels like. Ah. Oh, well, there's a mist of uh, metamorphosis. Well, let's go on the bevel, though. Here's a valiant charge here from Freedom. Oh, Lost damage coming. Wow! Way. Big holy embers of multiple members running, trying to go in there, but takes multiple shots from the tower, able to heal up with that spectral ire, but just barely. And actually, very fortunate that the terrifying plague didn't go on him and instead went on to the Roxy. So, gets away with it there. As this game continues to be very tight. Yeah, now we now we finally see Sora looking to grab himself an Abyssal Dragon. He should be able to secure this fairly easily. I don't see the members of Flashwolves coming in and doing anything about this. Actually secured by the by uh she need to just stop Flash from going in. Missings also was getting definitely a, ooh, nice flicker. Oh. Also was getting leashed for a moment there, so he needed to burn it down as quickly as possible. Wayne taking a lot of damage. Here comes the Angelic Splendor to come in and save him, but that's ended up being burned for no not much value. As Matt does back off in the end. Still, 9 towers to 8. Still very even gold here. So it's anyone's game at the moment. And since the wind finally picked up here for Thane. So he's going to be even more tanky, even more supporty for his team. Missing. Throwing out a mock punch. Uh, since the wind just popped here. Very strange. But there too, it is for Ron. As both sides continue to build damage. So we're going <laughs> to steal out that buff and start chasing Oh, down they're going to get this kill? Maybe oh, no. Bevel missing. Didn't Bevel didn't want to dive it. I think they saw missing jump into the bushes as well. So they, um, yeah. Oh, Wayne takes out Ronan across the map. Apparently, yeah. They, that's two on the bottom half of the map, but they should very easily be able to get this tower. Ronan's gonna get slowed, eats some damage, should be fine. But that's death for an inner tower. You'll pretty much take that trade as long as you can get into mid well, from the side of Mad. You can take an additional fight, and it's really just one wave proxied out of the bottom. So right. I'd still say. That the mad come out ahead of that trade. Well, if they don't hurry, Wayne's going to take down this tower because, like you mentioned, Ice Fang cut it off earlier on. So, good response here from Flash Wolves after that all went down, realizing that they had, instead of rotating back up, they should probably stick down this bottom lane. And they're able to trade out towers, so they did lose a tier two on their end. Now, gold, again, just completely even throughout all of this as the Abyssal. It's about to come up re relatively soon here. That said, we're at the 9 minute mark, so might not be a point of contention here. Because the Metamorphosis onto Ohm. Wayne trying to jump in, but already behind the tower. A little bit of a waste there from Ron. Not really needed in this situation as he's taking a lot of damage himself once more. I think that was Essence of the Wind Popped as well, because you don't get yep. shields when you're in Metamorphosis. Alright, so Abyssal Dragon going to be started. They very, very quickly are going to obliterate this. It, won't, it should not take them very long. So now we'll pick up their second Abyssal Dragon. 30 seconds Builds for the next one, by the way. Yeah, they can they can easily set themselves up to take an Enraged, and Sora, if he just grabs his, his Sage Golem real quick and just turns around, he'll be able to show up for that. Although it looks like he's heading up top to back up Bevel. Maybe cut off a uh, play coming in from Wayne. Ooh, they the use the Agnes Graft. It doesn't connect. Sword. Wayne looking for an opportunity to go back in, but he takes so much damage so quickly. He's gone. Instantly healed out. Now Sword looking for another opportunity. He's going to keep backing up. That's damage on him missing. That's a cycle and use, but that's not going to connect on anything. They don't manage to stun him, but they get massive King's damage. Glory. Here comes missing. He gets huge damage through with the King's Glory, but doesn't manage to connect it into a kill. That's a double buff in favor of of Sora, so he comes out ahead of that. Additional kills going their way. They're not in a position to take the Abyssal Dragon because they're going for a Dark Slayer. Missing is not really impressing me at the moment. <coughs> going in, dashing in, going for a Mock Punch. It didn't connect. Goes for a Cyclone on multiple members, but not anyone who's actually low, so very inconsequential in the end. And, yeah, he's not really looking to make plays. He's just looking to do the same move over and over again. Dive in, mock punch, dive out, maybe throw in a cycle in there, but really not making the plays happen for flash holes here. Yeah, and, I mean, despite this Mr. Stabby coming through, Sora's still playing incredibly well. He's getting lots and lots of damage in. Um, doesn't really have that much attack speed, but at the end of the day, he doesn't really care. Now, Ohm, 
Going pretty far in, puts some <laughs> pressure onto Wayne, uses the King's Glory a little bit prematurely. Yeah, That's going to be a good metamorphosis into the back line, but Ching Yi is really their only target. That could be a good shock, but they are going to all spread out. Good knockback by Ohm. Everybody is grouped up, and Jealous Blender is there. Ron oh, trying to stay, stay alive, but he won't be able to. Now missing, looking for his opportunity. He's going to get stunned up, uses the Cyclone instantly. He'll get a pullback in. Nice flicker, flicker out. out of there to keep himself safe, but oh. Ice Fang you know, drawing all of the ire oh. of the side. Oh. Bad Hill <laughs> brought down. Ohm is just keeping them away, being. <laughs> ultimate front line just <laughs> he was below a tower shoulder checks for days yeah. shoulder checks for days he was below a tower and getting chased by two and he's like i'm oh, fine it's fine <laughs> you guys do what you do <laughs> oh my goodness just it just seems like there's zero damage on the side of flash holes they're not getting anything done onto this back line and ohm continuing to pack pad those stats as far as damage received their damage absorbed wayne is looking for his flank though he's waiting in the, he's waiting in the wings and all of the members of MAD leave. The thing is, with the amount of damage on the side of MAD, Agni's grasp is absolutely terrifying. We saw it in that fight. Get the first pick off there. And from there, without one of your big frontliners up there, it really tears apart the side of Flash Wolf because there's just not enough beef and there's not enough ability to dive in the back as well because Wayne can't really do it by himself. So, Bevel, if he gets one of these Agni's grasps on, in a good way on one of the uh, one of the tanks, the team fight could just be over before it starts. Oh, so much slow. It looks like Wayne might have been able to oh make something God. happen, but he's going to get CC down, instantly destroyed by the King's Glory. That's going to be a decent position Cyclone missing. Maybe finally make something happen. Sora's going to go back in. Good metamorphosis from Ron, but they don't have the damage. They've lost their Krikanak. They've lost basically all of their Sword? physical damage. Don't take Sword's going to juke in and out of the brush. He's going to do that oh. with Ice Fake. He survives. Shiggy backs him up, keeps him alive, and now it's going to be the kill onto Ron. Is Ohm going to get it? Oh. Chase him. Ohm, King can Glory. you get it? No. Ohm won't <laughs> be able to secure that, but they do have the minion wave into the mid, and this looks like the end. Oh, missing. Finally finds an opportunity. This might be a good defense for them. Ron's going to go forward. There are no more minions, down. and Flash Wolves survive. <laughs> Oh my goodness, all went down at the very end there. It's a good start to the fight there for Mad. And even though Ron got a four-man metamorphosis, it just wasn't enough. The damage just isn't there, strangely enough. They need both Wayne and Missing to do a ton of damage, and it's just not coming through for them at the moment. It was all on Missing. There we are. All on Wayne. We said it, we said it at the start. Like, okay, you guys have just locked yourself out of having a mark spin you've locked yourself out of, out of having a, any other real source of damage wayne could get going looked for his level four gank he managed to get a kill but then a bunch of kills were traded back and mad are just kind of controlling the situation really really well also the build the ability of both the lindus and the ignis to kite back through these fights means that you're not going to get hit by Ice Fang walking at you with his cleave. You're not going to get too much damage on you from the Malleus or the Metamorphosis because you can just kite back through all of it. And that's meaning that Flash Wolves isn't able to really connect with the damage on any members. Wayne? Is, uh... He's going to be. Yep. I mean, uh, nope, he's going to stay. He's going to stay for the angle. He's looking for his opportunity, but... That window is closing pretty quickly. They are going to start to go there. in. They're looking for a metamorphosis. He has to be willing to go in. That's going to be a shock in the back line. Sword? Maybe they can finish sword off sword. Down. They instantly pop him, but he is going to come back. No, that's going to be the kill. Ronan did manage to get the Dark Blessing. He will keep himself alive for a little bit while longer. Wayne now backs himself out. Maybe they can collapse onto Bevel. They should be able to pick him up. Actually, Wayne, doesn't, he doesn't even want to consider taking that fight. He doesn't feel confident. He's got no health, and that's going to be the chase. Ice Fang committed. The rest of the Flash will stayed, but Wayne ran away, and Wayne has basically all of their damage. Yeah, and that's not a good sign for Flash Wolves because even though they were able to take out Sora, who is... A an important part of the side of Mad, they still lost that fight. Granted, they were down that buff, but it just goes to show what kind of position they are in. This tower is going to go down. Hero's in trouble. He falls as well. And this is not looking good for Flash Wolves at all. I, on, mm, that's, I, I know Wayne didn't want to risk it for the biscuit, but maybe you needed to stay. <laughs> maybe you needed to be there to get, get that extra kill. Get that biscuit, Wayne. <laughs> you need it. <laughs> Well, even with the Abyssal Curse, they're going to be jumping on... Oh, Wayne just diced a Ronin, apparently. Apparently that's a thing. 
Maybe that's why he's I, I mean, that's that's a Ryoma who just finished uh, Fenrir's and has Blade of Eternity. Like, he does damage. Yeah, he does damage and is tanky. He kills damage. things. He's, yeah, that's a he, mostly damage build. He, he he pokes you with a sharp sharp stick and it, and it, it hurts. I, that's... Uh, I like the, the multiple angle, the diagonal blades in your build. It just, it looks nice. <laughs> The symmetry. The symmetry is absolutely there. Missing. Oh, missing. What are you doing? Bell oh, to get missing. What are you grass. doing? Gonna get slowed down by Ohm. That's gonna be the metamorphosis. He's gonna get How really low. Alive? Glory comes out, but he does not what? die. Ohm tanks things through, but there's gonna be some additional damage onto Ron. Good cleave by Ice Fang. Heroes. I mean, they they flash wolves do have the potential to make this happen. They could be able to not make this Ice defense. Fang but Ice Fang gonna get caught. Ronan going forward finishes on him off with the spectral eye, but nobody is willing to commit. Wayne is Ronan. sitting off. On the weird angles, he needs to go in. He can't just wait Wayne, for this to happen. Wayne, what are you doing, There's buddy? Be the angelic splendor. It's going to keep them alive for a little bit while longer. But Wayne, he Wayne, waited too long for a moment. The moment is Wayne. Passed. Your course time, Wayne. 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 Wayne, what are you doing, buddy? <laughs> Wayne. That's Wayne. A bad oh my goodness! Full health, Wayne, in the fountain. And that's a two-zero for Mad. We said that this was going to be unlikely for Mad to get a win, but. Missing has been missing in these fights. Not the same mate that we've seen from Shishi. And Flash Wolves look very vulnerable coming to the stretch run of the regular season. I. That was. That was. Flash. No way, no. What? The Flash Wolves have fallen. That, that did not look good from our. That was a team that's tied for first place in the league. Uh, I mean, not anymore. <laughs> not anymore at all. Like, they are now very much second position-wise. They've, they've, lost, they've lost that game. And if they're capable uh, of losing to Mad, then they're capable of losing to anyone. Which means... Like I said, the fla flash, flash, wolves, flash, wolves have just, flash Wolves have just fallen from the 1-2 contention to, honestly... 3-4. They they are making the playoffs. There are not enough games for them to not make playoffs mathematically. Uh, SMG literally doesn't have enough, or one team does not have enough games that they could win to knock Flash Wolves out of the playoffs. It literally is mathematically impossible. One team has three more games and Flash Wolves has nine wins. One team can't take them out, but Flash Wolves if, look like a third, fourth place team now. Yeah, and if they continue to play like this they are very much in danger of falling to that third, fourth place, which is a big deal in the GCS because, like we mentioned, it's a gauntlet-style playoffs. Number one seed advances straight to the finals. Number two seed advances straight to the semifinals. And third and fourth place battles, uh, battles it out in the first round. So, yeah, if Flash Wolves continue to play like this, it's going to be a free fall. And if, if, if Flash Wolves cannot ride themselves back or Shishi does not return, Flash Wolves will be third. AHQ and J Team will overtake them. I I believe that wholeheartedly. Whether or not they'll drop to fourth is up to well, SMG, and I would have to look at all of the matchups. Third and fourth but are look, the same though, so it doesn't matter. You, you, yeah. <laughs> I I'm sure there's some advantage to being third over fourth. You get, like in terms of like getting first pick of side or or draft <laughs> position. Right. Okay. Fine. Like, either way, I. S I don't. I'd have to look at the matches to see whether or not SMG can drop them into third. Our second MVP thing today. Oh, oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh no! Oh, uh, oh my god! I don't. I still don't fully believe that the Thane is key, but Thane has now moved up to a mid-tier support to me. So. I want to still say he's, that he's I want to still say that Chognar and Mina are the better supports, and like if they're they're the S tier supports. Now in A tier, you've got Thane, you've got Annette, you've got um, I think Yebeneth might even Yebeneth might honestly be A tier. Yeah, so uh, Yebeneth is A tier. Well, he was uh, absolutely uh, no, dominant he, in that first game. No, no, no. Yebeneth is Esther. Yebeneth is Esther. So the Esther supports are Mina, Chognar, Yebeneth. And the A tier supports are, like, Thane is now an A tier support to me. 
He's well, he's now he's now official. Like I've seen enough games where I believe that he is he is jack of all trades A tier. He doesn't he's he is not an answer A tier, but he is like we can fill it, fit him in, and he will be of use. We're seeing a lot of supports really embrace the uh, the big behind supports, as I like to call them. Just the super tanky and just get in there. Oh, you saw in the first game, extremely aggressive with the Yevaneth, just constantly invading, constantly putting the fear into the opponent and not having any fear of his own. Same thing goes with the Thane. Cuckoo was the same way, just consistently walking in there with the Thane and... Honestly, the other teams are kind of playing into it, not trying to get creative, not trying to go to the back lane, or even draft heroes who are capable of doing so. They're kind of letting the Thane walk up to them, and they're attacking the Thane, which is exactly what Thane wants, because he has that passive that keeps him alive oh so long. Yeah, and I, now that I'm looking at Flashwolf's remaining schedule, so AIDS Q versus SMG, that's got pretty big... Uh, the, tomorrow's matches have pretty big playoff implications with AIDS Q and SMG and J-Team versus 1, but... Next week, Flash Wolves play one. They just lost to Mad. One is looking at that like, this is our chance to beat the Flash Wolves. And then they play AHQ. AHQ is like, Flash Wolves are now Flash Puppies. Like, they have, they, have, they have dropped a significant power tier. AHQ is definitely looking at that and being like, okay, we smash SMG, HKA, and Flash Wolves. We're number two, maybe even number one, depending on how J team plays up against uh, one tomorrow. All right. Well, looks like the official broadcast is going to be wrapping up, which means we will as well. Thank you guys for watching. We'll be starting up the stream tomorrow at the exact same time as today. That being, well, 3.30 Japan time. It's uh, 11.30 p.m. Pacific time. Yep. So if you guys want to check that out, make sure you tune in tomorrow. Starts in, wait, what time is it? So 4, or it's 6 right now here, so 21 and hours and 30 minutes? Yeah, about. There you go. All right, thanks for watching, guys, and see you later. Oh, yeah, shout out to Arena Valor for hosting the stream. Oh, they did? Okay, nice. Yeah.